My name is Ebenezer Amwako Entry, and you are so welcome to this YouTube channel. On this YouTube channel, you are going to get videos that will set you up in your work with God and also with your prayer life. On this channel, you upload videos consistently to make sure that believers are guided to pray and pray and pray. If you are new to this YouTube channel, make sure that you subscribe to the YouTube channel so that when we upload new videos, you can have access to them. And also, if you don't understand anything, kindly send us a message and we will get back to you. Also, make sure that this video you are about to watch, you will like the video, try and comment on it. And when you are blessed by the video, make sure that you share it to someone. Thank you. Precious Father, we thank you for the privilege that we have to gather and to congregate under the auspices of your spirit. We are persuaded tonight that your hand will rest and descend upon us mightily to cause a quickening on our inside. We are persuaded by the reason of the supply of your grace there will be enlargement of capacities granted us even with the requisite wisdom required to extend the frontiers of the kingdom. We trust even tonight that the very reason for which your spirit have put together this meeting will not just gain momentum tonight but it will become clearer and the intensities of the energies of the spirit supplied to advance this purpose for which your spirit have designed even those dimensions will begin to find expression Thank you, gracious Father. We give you all the glory. In Jesus' precious name. In the precious name of Jesus. Amen. You may be seated. God bless you. It's needful for us to realize that our world is besieged with darkness. The worst thing that can be devil a Christian at a time like this is to think by any means that the operations and the occurrences of events around his life is a function of coincidence. Every activity that you see play around your life and around your environment is a function of strategic intelligence from the, from the spirit realm, either orchestrated from the realm of God or from the demonic. What constitutes an advantage is your understanding of the principles, the precepts, and the mysteries that governs the operations and the interactions of spirits. And the greatest wisdom that you will have operational in your life in a season as strategic as this is the wisdom of alignment with spirits that are responsible for the orchestration of tides of events and sequences of circumstances. However, unfortunately, only Christians are relaxed in a season that is largely characterized by warfare. Only Christians think that the things happening around us is a function of coincidence. It is so unfortunate that the operations and the events marshaled out from the spirit realm could be swallowing up an entire family and they would not have risen to the defense of the integrity of that family and securing the heritage of God for that family, thinking that everything happening is a function of coincidence until the very last man standing is swallowed up. A young man finds himself running after things that are outrightly against his destiny. But he just feels that it's, a, it's an appetite. It's a desire that he has. He just feels it's an influence from a pair group. Largely does he do not realize that everything that is happening around him is a function of an orchestration by principalities hanging in the very heights of the spirit realm. Tonight I want to open your eyes to certain mysteries in the kingdom that will constitute an advantage for you which will not just be a, a momentary deliverance, but will give you capacity to walk in the liberty that you have in Christ Jesus for the rest of your life. 
The best kind of deliverance you have in your life is not the type that is that comes upon you by reason of casting out the devil. The greatest kind of deliverance that will happen to you is the realization of the fact that you are in the midst of a warfare and you receive energy from the Spirit of God to stand your ground in righteousness and push back the tides of darkness. Until you receive that requisite capacity of the Spirit, you are still a puppet in the hands of the devil. And nothing strengthens a man like understanding. God speaking to Job, he said, declare now if you have understanding. The only thing that gives you authority for declaration in the kingdom is the kind of understanding that you come into an account of interaction with the spirit that holds that knowledge. If you have not interacted sufficiently with an understanding of a kind of operation, you will be a slave to it for the rest of your life. Jesus sat with the disciples in Matthew chapter 16. And he began to ask, who do men say I am? And Peter said, Thou art the Christ, the Son of the living God. And Jesus said, Flesh and blood have not revealed this to you, but my Father which is in heaven. And he said, Thou art Peter. And upon this rock, the word is upon this revelation, upon this strategy that you have secured in the Spirit. I will build my church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. The only assurance that the church has is to consistently and constantly stay fine-tuned and connected to the source of revelation. Because prevailing dominion only comes as you receive insight from heaven. He said, upon this kind of revelation, upon this strategy that you have apprehended in the spirit, I will build my church and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. Any man that understands the technology of connection with heaven is totally delivered on earth and can never come under the authority or the influence of any other being. But most of us, we function by philosophies and ideologies that are caught from other men and we have not even proven it in our lives. The most intelligent strategy of discipleship is to connect people to the spirit realm where they can secure the voice of God for themselves. If you have not come to a point where you can secure the voice of God for yourself, what you are doing is religion. And it has no life in it. It may sustain the form of godliness, but it will never have the power of the Holy Ghost. That was not the design. The design was for every one of us to know the pathways by which we can navigate into the throne room. And until we begin to apprehend realities from that realm, we don't have authority in the natural. Little wonder we come to church, many prophecies, many revelations, but little impact. Because only few know the path into the throne room. Christianity is reduced to a religion. And it's so unfortunate. Tonight, God is going to open your eyes to what you need to do in order to be a true victor in life. <laughs> Everything Jesus has done for us is legal. And it's in the spirit. Until you can trap it down in your soul, it will not be an experience. And until it becomes an experience, it has no authority to impact on existential realities. The challenges that are bedeviling you, they are real. And quoting things that are in the spirit will not change it. You must know how to travel there to secure that which is in the spirit so that you can tender it as a proof in the natural. That is when your life will begin to have meaning. It is the responsibility dimension of the Christian faith. And a lot run away from it. And they think by running away from it, they are doing themselves good. That is why we remain the way we are. But discipleship in the days of the patriarch was not the kind, or it's not the kind that we have today. That's why at the age of 17, Timothy will be obtaining elders in Ephesus. He was a bishop at the age of 17 because it was not a function of age. Neither was he a function of duration in the church. It was the function of grace apprehended on account of interaction with the spirit of life. There's an error in the orientation 
of the faith that we practice today. Thank God for choice servants of God that have their roots in the spirit, raising a young generation like this and equipping them with the requisite knowledge to challenge darkness. Tonight is a night of revelation. As you catch it, you will enter into it. <laughs> did you not notice when you read your Bible that Jesus never did any miracle for his 12 disciples? They didn't need it. What they needed was what we create miracles. When Jesus was about living, he came and he prayed for them. And the Bible said, open he their understanding that they may understand the scriptures. The moment their understanding was open, they had authority to control and to regulate the activities in their realm. What you need is understanding. Hallelujah. Glory to the Lamb. Glory to the Father. You are seated on the throne. Glory to the Lamb. Glory to the Father. You are seated on the throne. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to the Lamb. Glory to the Father. You are seated on the throne. Matthew 16 verse 16 And Simon Peter answered and said Thou art the Christ The son of the living God And Jesus answered and said unto him Blessed art thou Simon by Jonah For flesh and blood hath not revealed it unto thee But my father which is in heaven And I say unto thee Thou art Peter And upon this rock I will build my church And the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. Before I begin to unravel the technology of revelation tonight, I'd like to show you something that Jesus pointed out. Even though the church was not yet born, Jesus emphatically specified that the gate of hell was going to contend with the church. If you are a student of the spirit, you will understand that there are different revelations for different dispensations. And every revelation that is apportioned to a dispensation must be declared upon the commissioning of God. So sometimes through intimacy with the Holy Spirit, you are carried into the realm of the Spirit and God begins to reveal things to you. And then to your dismay, God tells you never to utter it. And then if you don't have understanding, you begin to wonder, why did you have to reveal this to me if there is no need altering it? If you alter a revelation that is not backed up by a kingdom legislation, what you have done is that you have opened yourself up in the spirit realm and you become vulnerable. Because in the heavens of God, there are ranking angels that are custodians over different mysteries of the kingdom and they are watchers over different dispensations of the operations of God. 
There are angels in heaven that are never mobilized except a dispensation is about to open up. And there are angels that are watchers over dispensations. So whenever God is about to open up a dispensation, such angels are commissioned to go forth. Those are the angels that back up utterances and decrees from heaven that brings about an unveiling of a new kind of revelation to the earth realm. The earth realm happened to be the realm of manifestation. So realities are concluded in the spirit realm and they just break upon the earth realm by reason of the commissioning of God. And when God utters these things through men, angels are given authority to back them up even as they come to proclaim this revelation. Whenever a man, for instance, steps out of the jurisdiction of the utterance that God has given to him, what he has done is that he becomes open again. So his defense system becomes limited because the angels don't align with men. They align with the authority of God. That was why when Joshua went to destroy Jericho and he saw the angel of the Lord stood in, Je in Joshua chapter 6 with his sword drawn out, he said, are you for us or against us? The angel said unto him, nay, I'm neither for you, neither am I against you. But according to the word of the Lord, am I come. He is standing with the word of the Lord. So long as Joshua aligned with the decree of heaven, the angel will walk with him. The moment he steps out, he is at the risk of being slain. And the angel will do nothing about it because they are not emotional beings. By their configuration, they are executioners. They guard the jealousy of God and they watch over the authority of God. John the Baptist was sent in the spirit and in the powers of Elias. And what was his manifesto was to bring about the revelation and, and to alter the dispensation of the coming of the Messiah. You see, but when, while John was doing that, nothing happened to him. But the day he stepped out of that assignment, that mandate that was given to him, his head was on the tree. And the angel that was given the authority to guard that which John was called to do, did nothing about it. That is how the systems operate. When Jesus declared that the church is going to stand upon the revelation, he made us understand that there is a contention against it. And that is because the same way angels are giving mandates to guard over unveiling dispensation, the same way there are ranking demons in the spirit that are watching out for breaking news from heaven. The same way there are ranking demons in the spirit watching out for unveilings of dispensation. And they will always come to fight it. So Jesus told us ahead of time that as the church is going to be unveiled, there will be attack, there will be adversary from the demonic realm. When you have this kind of understanding, the first thing you do is that you draw back and you begin to see the necessity of having the voice of the Lord. And that is why in the scripture, nobody does anything except as the voice of the Lord comes to him. The prophets were people that were always walking in delicate corridors where their lives were at risk. The reason why you saw them did dangerous things boldly and it didn't even occur to kings to kill them was because they did not utter a word except as the word of the Lord came to them. So in your time and in your dispensation today, if you are walking in a technology where you don't have understanding on how to apprehend the word of the Lord, you have actually put your life on jeopardy. So when you come to church and everything is going on, you should look out for the word of the Lord. When you go about your natural activities, you should look out for the word of the Lord. Because what you are doing is not subject to frivolities where you do it how you want or when you want. Everything you are doing is a well-legislated mandate. And if you fail on the assignment, your life is on track. A lot of Christians have not been taught the delicate balances of the spirit, so they take a lot of things for granted. And that is why a lot are cut off and they don't even know why. Do you know that for not discerning the body of Christ, a lot of people die? For just coming to church and then you talk against the man of God, a lot of people die. You call it coming to serve the Lord, but Paul said for this cause many sleep, not discerning the body. This is not a demon fighting you, but this is you going against the legislation of the kingdom. It is too important for you to know how to secure the voice of the Lord and live for it.
because there are entities that are fighting against the advancement of the purposes of God. Meanwhile, it's a privilege for every one of us that have been called. Because until the gates of eternity are open, you will not know the meaning of life. Life has no meaning except as you are standing on a mandate. What gives you relevance in time is the kind of assignment that you are fulfilling. Else, everything on your nostrils is just breath. And the day it goes, you will discover you never lived. I heard a story by Dr. Miles Moreau of Blessed Memory. He went to a tomb, taking a siesta, just relaxing, and then he was looking upon the names of the people on the grave. And suddenly the voice of God came to him, and the Lord told him, these people didn't live. And he said, ah, this is their date of death now. They lived on earth, and this is when they, they died. And he said, no, they only breathed the breath of life. They didn't live. Why? Because they didn't scratch the purpose for which they were created. And as far as the blueprint of heaven is concerned, if you have not scratched the purpose for which you were born, you are not factored in the purposes, in the economy, and in the workings of God in the world to come. And in case you do not know, everything we call time is not relevant, except as God has a purpose he wants to fulfill. And what will give you relevance in the world to come, where true life is, is the extent to which you fulfill the purpose for which God has brought you here. And the only way you can do that is to find out how to secure the voice of God. Because God has a word for every one of us. So accurate discipleship is pushing people into the spirit realm where they can secure God for themselves. But unfortunately, more than 90% of the people in the church have never heard God. If we take a census now and say, when was the last time God spoke to you? You'll be amazed. Some persons have never heard God. But they've been Christians since the day they were born. Some are even in leadership position. Because they think the Christian corridor is like a political corridor. Where through service, through commitment, or through conversing of support, you can ascend to the ladders. But it's far from it. It is actually a work of intimacy with the spirit. Understanding the heartbeat of that spirit. And conforming to his desires. Until that which he has in mind is better through you in your world. Life is deeper than we see it. And if you don't know it, you will not know what you are looking for. You will only be looking out, living for your appetites. And the things you desire, most of them vanish away before the very seasons you are in. You know the last time, can you remember the shoe you wore four years ago? But some people live all their life for shoes. Do you remember the food you ate three weeks ago? But some people live their life for food. What a waste. What a waste. My spirit is burdened because I'm seeing a lot of young people here. It's time for you to begin to look for meaning. Daddy told me, he said, it's a season for activating kingdom realities. What are the realities in the kingdom? <laughs> when we speak about realities, we speak of things that are both real in the spirit and in the natural. They hold sway in the spirit and in the natural. They cannot be shaken or altered in the natural. And if you enter the spirit, they will still not be shaken. For example, if you are sick now and you are a Christian, no worry. And they say you have cancer. You don't have cancer. Now, in the natural, they can even go to the lab and discover there is a growth. And they call the growth cancer. But by the time you journey through the veil of the divide and you enter into the spirit realm and you see your reality, there is no cancer there. That is because in the spirit, you have already apprehended healing. But you don't know how to transmit healing from the spirit to the natural. So in the natural, they say you have cancer. That is fact, but it's not reality. That is what? Fact. But what we are dealing with for this season is reality. Realities are things that are real in the natural and in the spirit. They still sustain the same capacity. One of the greatest reality in the spirit is the person of the Christ. He's the one that controls and regulates the totality of the government, both in the spirit and in the natural. When you start talking about realities, then you begin to look at entities. You begin to look at thrones. You begin to look at laws, precepts, policies that governs the oppression of the realm. For example, the reason why fact cannot be superior to reality is that Reality can alter fact. Fact can never alter reality. The day I realize that I've been healed in Christ, in the natural, the hidden power will superimpose over the cancer and it will die. But there will never be a day where my spirit will have cancer.
answer because what is in my spirit is reality but what is in the natural is only temporal that's why paul said why we look at the things which are not seen he said the things which are seen they are temporal but the things that are unseen they are eternal this weekend we want to focus at the things that are unseen because that's what your life is built upon and the first thing i want to open to us tonight is about the person that governs the operation of the realm is the beauty of heaven in fact for us to understand him is the reason the holy ghost came without him you cannot substantiate reality in fact in a bold statement he made he said i am the way i am the truth i am the life the word truth there means the substance of reality everything that is a reality proceeds from my inside outside of me nothing exists i am the substance of reality the question is how many of you have met him the day you meet jesus that day a lot of things will begin to break out i'll share some test mind-blowing testimonies with you today and then you will realize that it's not about the stature of a man it's about his encounters in the spirit the cardinal reason the holy ghost came is so that you will know him you will know him jesus said i have many things to say to you he said but you can't receive it he said how be it when the spirit of truth is come he will guide you into all realities the question is what is jesus talking about what is the reality the holy ghost is guiding us into he said i am the substance of reality so what he's telling us is that the holy ghost is going to carry you into the multifaceted dimensions of my being there are different quarters in jesus there are different dimensions in jesus what you call gifts is a place in christ what you call power is a place in christ what you call prosperity is a place in christ only if you will walk with the holy ghost he will journey you through there jesus said that is the cardinal reason the holy ghost is coming he will guide you into all realities there are four major dimensions of the reality of the christ that is revealed in the new testament i want to show you those four places quickly before we begin to pray where is the holy ghost guiding us to into all reality what is what is what is what represents all reality in the spirit it's a person his name is jesus If you have been walking with the Holy Ghost accurately, you would have traveled into different places in Jesus. You would have traveled into different places. The reason a lot of people fascinate over angels is because they have not seen Jesus. He is the beauty of the spirit realm. Some people fascinate themselves over different operations. They have not seen Jesus. The day you see Jesus, you will be lost over him. Your soul will be eaten up. Your soul will be eaten up. You don't know what men see that make them stay in the place of prayer for days. And they don't come out. They are not using their will. It's not their will they are exercising. It's one thing for you to go and kneel down and say I must pray for 10 hours. It's another thing to go and kneel down and be sucked into the spirit realm. You will lose consciousness of time. You are touching something. You are touching a being. His name is Jesus. The moment you see him, you will become like him. You'll be sucked into him. Oneness will be secure. Is the beauty of life. He said the reason the Holy Ghost have come is to carry you into my dimensions. And you need to understand that only the Holy Ghost has the capacity to do that. You see, there are three revelators in the spirit realm. The first revelator in the spirit realm is the Father. The second revelator in the spirit realm is the Son. And the third revelator in the spirit realm is the Spirit. This is how the father reviews. What the father does is that he gives you disclosures. He gives you what? Disclosures. So sometimes you just, you are going to church, you don't know what to do, and suddenly you just feel, this is what I should do. We call those disclosures. They are knowings. 
knowings, knowings. The Father gives disclosures. But you see, disclosures are not sufficient. Because you can know about something, but you will not be there. How many of you before have had a knowing about something, but you didn't have the capacity to bring it to pass? You see, you were given a disclosure in heaven. So even the apostles, when they saw the church, they couldn't bring the church to pass. Because disclosures are not enough. Peter knew how the church was going to be built. The son gives instructive revelations. So when the son speaks to you, he tells you what you ought to do. It's not just a disclosure now. He tells you how you need to do it. But even at that, you don't have the capacity to do. The only one that gives you disclosure, instruction, and also gives you the capacity to do is called the spirit. That is why it is only the spirit that will guide you into all truths. Let me tell you something. You may, you may be told the symptoms of malaria. You know that you have sore throat, weakness, pains all over, and then sometimes you have headache. So you now know what malaria is. So you can identify malaria in people. You see, that's what a lot of us have. And that is why you see that we are fault finders in the church. Everybody knows, ah, this is not, this is how it should be, this is how it should be. But nobody is doing it because we only have disclosures. And then you could even come to a point where you can identify or diagnose who has malaria. But you still don't know malaria. The father will give you, this is what malaria looks like. The son will give you the description, detailed description of malaria. But the Holy Ghost wants to show you malaria. He will put malaria on you. So you will have first-hand experience of malaria. So by the time you are knowing malaria, you are experiencing malaria. You have become malaria. That's how the Holy Ghost teaches. And that is why it is the responsibility of the Holy Ghost to guide you into all realities. So what Jesus is trying to say is that, I'm about to leave this world. But you see, only people who carry my DNA can conquer the world. And the only way carriers of my DNA can come into the world is to bring a teacher who will not only talk to them about me, but as he carries them, they will become me. So when you come into the congregation of the righteous, you are not seeing Peter, you are not seeing John. You are seeing Jesus Peter. You are seeing Jesus John. Because every one of us has the DNA, the nature, and the capacity of the Christ. So God is no longer perturbed in heaven because he knows that the same ability that Jesus operated in, that same ability we are going to have. So the worst undoing of a Christian is his refusal to yield to the Holy Spirit. Because every time we refuse to yield to the Holy Spirit, we are subscribing to the energy of the flesh instead of taking the energy of the Spirit. When you begin to yield to the Holy Spirit, you now discover you are not looking like the Spirit. You are looking more and more like Jesus. Because the duty of the Holy Spirit is to carry you into all realities. Let me show you the four dimensions of the realities of the Holy Spirit quickly before we go. The first revealed in the New Testament is Jesus, the Son of God. Until that revelation becomes real to you, you will never have confidence against the devil. If you don't know Jesus, the Son of God, you will never see yourself as the Son of God. I told you what does the Holy Ghost do? As He carries you into, you'll become like Him. The Bible reveals. Let's read a few scriptures very quickly. We're already out of time. You see, the street realm is so beautiful. You can tap into an economy and then you travel beyond many dispensations to see the things that are far away from your dispensation. Are we together? It's a possibility in the spirit. So the first man that entered into this understanding was Isaiah. And it was Isaiah that began to tell us. He said, don't to us. A child is born. Unto us a son is given. The first dimension of Jesus that is relieved and re re revealed and given to the church is Jesus, the Son of God. The question is why is it important for us to know Jesus as the Son of God? Because it is in the context of this knowledge that you will now have confidence in the fact that you, a mere mortal, can also become the Son of God. And there is no way you can explain this in articulate speech. 
you only know it by experience you see the holy ghost is the most important personality in the world the holy ghost is the most important entity in the world the journey of the spirit actually begins as you begin to interact with the holy spirit if you don't know the holy spirit you can be accurate theologically because of many years of learning but you will not have understanding of spiritual things you cannot be a consultant of mysteries you cannot give direction as as it pertains to kingdom because this kind of knowledge does not come from studying you see the apostle said he pleased the holy ghost and us that you should not burden this world that just came into the kingdom you see when jesus left there was no syllabus for the apostles to study there was a serious contention in the gentile church who will they consult who will they speak to there was nobody it was only as they latched the holy spirit and they said he pleased the holy ghost and us as you begin to walk with the holy spirit the first thing he shows you is jesus the son of god that is when the credentials of jesus is beginning to open to you you see you may be bedridden for many years and then they show up and tell you jesus is your healer but because of the years of suffering your suffering has become so real to you that even if they told you this is jesus it will be difficult for you to accept that he can do anything about it except as you begin to hear his credentials over and over again the woman with the issue of blood she heard she heard and when she had heard to a point that she was saturated you know when she was hearing she was still consulting with doctors because the doctors seemed to have results but a point came where the doctors could no longer suffice and then at this point the bible recorded that she heard she had heard about the credentials of this man she heard so much that she said she didn't need the man to talk to her if she could only touch the helm of his garment from whence did she apprehend that kind of faith by her understanding of the person of the son of god the capacities that this man reveals they are not ordinary the things that this man does they are supernatural who is this man who 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 so one of the things the holy ghost labors to reveal to you is a revelation of the fact that jesus did not come from this realm he came from a realm that is superior to your realm and you must have to know it and believe it he said god who had sound three times and in diverse manners spake in time past unto the fathers by the prophet had in this last day spoken unto us by his son he is trying to give you a distinction between the prophet you may have heard about moses he parted the red sea you may have heard about elijah he caught fire from heaven he said but this one is not a prophet he is the son of god he said by whom all things were made by whom all things were made this one i'm speaking about he created all things he didn't have the power to to manipulate the causes of creation it, it is not like joshua that had to tell the moon to stop he created the moon that is the revelation of the son of god he begins to create a consciousness in your mind that he is beyond your scope of existence and in case it has not sunk into you very well he said in the beginning was the world the world was with god and the world was god he said the same was with god in the beginning all things were made by him and without him was not anything made that was made that's the credential the holy ghost will begin to reveal these dimensions to you until a point will come when nothing will be as real to you as the powers of jesus that's why the bible tells us he said my son attend to my words he said give thy ears to my saying let them not depart out of thy eyes he said put them in the midst of thy heart he said they are life to them that find them what thing the holy ghost does for you is to bring you to a point where you find the son of god until you come there you will never have confidence you can be a pastor and you come to the pulpit and you are shouting ah, 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 or you have a you are a cell leader or you are leading a, some young people and you are talking with with boldness with audacity but they, when they bring a real life challenge the first thing that will attack your heart is fear that fear is not shouting but it's more real to you than your voice the only way you can deal with that is until the revelation of the all-powerful son of god is granted you
So when you begin to journey with the Holy Spirit, that's the first place it takes you to. It takes you to a place where you have total confidence in God. And that is when you can surrender to Him. If you don't have confidence in God, you can never surrender. Because man is designed such that his brain reads negatively. And the reason he reads negatively is to create an advantage of security for him. As we are here now, the moment you hear a sound, you will respond before you think. That's how you are designed. He is designed like, you are designed like that to keep you safe. So you cannot trust what you don't, you, you cannot rely on what you don't trust. So the Holy Ghost will first of all carry you into a realm of God where you can trust Him. And most people have not even as much as come there. And it doesn't matter how bogus we talk about it. We have not come there. Don't allow your heart deceive you. You can be a leader. You can even be running a fellowship. And you are saying bogus things that you don't believe. Don't allow your heart deceive you. Better go and settle down first. Kenny Hagin said he read the New Testament 150 times before he began to speak. He was caught. He settled this matter in his heart. He settled it. Is it settled in your heart? If it's not settled in your heart, you will trust in other things. And it's so unfortunate that even though you are not saying it, in the spirit realm it is real. Because your thought is tangible there. Here your thought is intangible. But in the spirit realm, your thought is tangible. The angels are seeing it and even demons are seeing it. So when you start now, you are proclaiming with authority, the demons will just be laughing. Because you can deceive the people. But in the spirit realm, fear is standing on your head like, like a sword. It is visible. We have come to a church where everybody is talking big. Talking big, all kinds of lofty things. But we believe so little. That's why our results are very little. You must follow the Holy Spirit. That's the first revelation in the Bible about Jesus. The Son of God. The angel appeared to Mary. And he said, that thing that is formed in you, it shall be called the Son of the Highest. This must be formed in you. Because that will become the basis of your conviction. A lot don't have conviction. And that's why we trust in uncles, we trust in money, we trust in people, we trust in things. There are some who have graduated for six years. They have received disappointment continually, but they have never been able to shift their trust. Because they don't have any other object of trust. It's a pity. But that's how we live. And the reason is because we have not apprehended the Son of God. He said, Thus said the Lord. He said, Woe unto the man that trusted in man, who maketh flesh his arm. He said, Whose heart departed from the Lord. The day you make any other thing your trust, what happens to you that you are not aware of is that your heart has already departed from the Lord. He said, It shall be like the heat in the desert. He shall not see good when he cometh. He shall live in the past places of the desert, a salt land that is not inhabited. Most of us, we are not even aware that our heart has departed from the Lord. We keep trusting things, trusting things. The first thing you need to do today in order to begin to orchestrate an activation of the mysteries of the kingdom is for you to come back to the Holy Spirit and ask Him to reveal to you the Son of God. You can quote Him. It doesn't mean you know Him. But they that do know their God. <laughs> they that do know their God. They shall be strong. And they shall do exploits. That's the first thing the Holy Ghost does for you. And the second thing the Holy Ghost does. Is that he reveals to you. Jesus. The Savior. Jesus, the Savior. When you know Jesus, the Son of God, and you develop strong conviction and confidence, then the Holy Ghost reveals to you Jesus, the Savior. It's so amazing how sequentially these things are placed in the Bible. Matthew chapter 1 verse 20. Look at what the Bible says.
Hallelujah. Are we together? He said, but why he thought on these things? That's Joseph. Contemplating on what to do regarding his wife. Ex Behold, the angel of the Lord appeared unto him in a dream, saying, Joseph, thou son of David, fear not to take unto thee Mary thy wife, for that which is conceived in her is of the Holy Ghost. And she shall bring forth a son, after the son, what next? And thou shalt call his name Jesus. The second revelation, the second reality that the Holy Ghost carries you to, is the reality of Jesus the Savior. Most of us are still not sure of our salvation. And so we are weak. We are weak in our contentions. We are disadvantaged in our operations. Because we have not come to a full assurance of our salvation. The totality of salvation is within the scope of the name of Jesus. I wish I had time to talk about salvation tonight. It is in Jesus that you find the incarnation. It is in Jesus that you find the birth. It is in Jesus that you find the suffering and the death. It is in Jesus that you find the resurrection. It is in Jesus that you find the ascension. And all of these five things have five different implications. There was no way the fallen man could satisfy the claims of divine justice. There was no way atonement could be made for man. Because nothing on earth was devoid of corruption. Only a reality that came from the realm of God himself had the capacity to sustain a, 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 a disposition that is void of corruption. And that substance that came from the realm of God is a person called Jesus. On account of his purity, by reason of where he came from, he has the capacity to pay to be rendered as a ransom. So the incarnation itself is a revelation of the quality of sacrifice that God provided for atonement. It is in the death that the old man is dealt with. And there are two things that happen in the death. One pertains to the blood, the other pertains to the cross. The blood deals with the sins you commit. The cross deals with the sin nature. Apostle will always tell us. He said you could go around the town and collect all the beer bottles. Maybe more lager beer and destroy all of them. But if you have not done anything about the factory, you have wasted your time. So when the blood was spilled, it took care of the committed sin. But the cross, it deals with the nature of sin. The serpentine nature. That we succeeded from Satan. And carrying the cross is a lifelong reality. The Holy Ghost will teach you and he will place the cross upon you every day. It is one of the greatest burdens. You see, there are five things you die to as a human being. You will die to sin. You will die to Satan. You will die to judgment. You will die to the world. But the fifteen, which is the hardest to die to, is flesh. To die to flesh, God does not do it absent of your own consciousness. You will do it with your eyes open. That's what the Bible means when they say, we are living sacrifices. That's where you die to self. You cast yourself, you cast your appetite, cast your ambition away at the instance of the voice of God. And that is where you really become like God. The only way to put out the old man is to pick your cross. And picking your cross is dying to self. And if you don't die to self, you can never do business with God. You see, God is father. So as father, there are lots of things that you can do. You know, you fall today, come tomorrow, say, Lord, I'm sorry. Because he's father. And he will keep you as son. But if you want to come to kingdom legislation... You will not meet a father. You will meet a judge. 
And in meeting with a judge, you will interact not by love. You interact by laws. When you are interacting with father, it's on the basis of love. But when you are interacting with the judge of all, you are interacting based on law and righteousness. Because in kingdom legislation, warfare is involved. There are entities that will cut you off. And because they are subscribing to the laws of the spirit, there is nothing God can do about it. There are demons that will cut you off because you stepped out of the provision of the laws of righteousness and there is nothing God can do about it. Paul began to talk about warfare. He said, why you have done all this to stand? He says, stand there up. Because there is a possibility that you will not stand when you are done. This is kingdom legislation. So he said, you should be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. The word power there is the word kratos. Might is the word iskus. Kratos is not the same power you receive when you receive the Holy Ghost. And yes, shall receive power after that the Holy Ghost has come upon you. That's dynamis. That one is a potential power. Kratos is dynamic power. This light you are seeing is kratos. Light came because the gem, the dynamo in the gem has taken off. What you have with the Holy Spirit is the dynamo. But you have to activate the dynamo until it becomes like this. Before you can even begin to talk matters of warfare. So a Christian who does not engage in tongues until power is activated in his inside is not even a candidate of warfare. That's Kratos. And then Iskus is military might, participation with other forces in the spirit in order to advance the kingdom of God. That one has to do with your understanding of the operation of the angelic. Because that is the other army that we war with. You know, God we told we tell David that when you see the wind move against the mamre tree, I have gone ahead. So the reason he won many battles was not because he was so strong. It was not because of his military intelligence. It was because of partnership. That kind of power is called Iskus. That was the kind of power Daniel engaged after he prayed for 21 days. And the angel Gabriel said, I have been caused to fly swiftly so that I may give you skill and understanding. And when Gabriel was not sufficient, Michael was sent again to contend with who? The prince of Persia. That is not a demon. That is a fallen angel. You cast out demons. You don't cast out fallen angels. You war with them. You don't know why a lot of us are shouting things but people are dying. Not every category of the demonic is a demon. Some are fallen angels. They can appear in the presence of God. So that you are worshipping does not mean they will go away. Jesus finished fasting for 40 days and Satan came and said, come. <laughs> fallen angels. You know, Paul was the one that told us, cast it down imagination. And every high standing thing that opposes itself above the knowledge of God. And bringing into captivity all things to the obedience of Christ. When your obedience is fulfilled, you fulfill, you avenge other disobedience. That was when he was young in the faith. If you go and check the chronology of the writings of Paul, he began with 1 Thessalonians. He ended with Colossians, Ephesians, 1 Timothy and 2 Timothy. Go and see the things he wrote there. They are mysteries. It was in the book of Ephesians where utterance was granted him that he began to talk about warfare. That time he didn't say cast down. He said, first of all, you must be kitted with the whole armor of God. If you don't have the armor of God, you will die. And you don't walk with a fallen angel by shouting the name of Jesus. You walk with them by Rema. By Rema. If you don't understand the technology of Rema, you can't walk because it's the sword of the spirit. If you have not known how to catch Rema in the place of prayer, you can't war with them. And Paul said they will throw fiery darts at you. Some of those darts are cancers. Some of those darts are hepatitis. Some of those darts, they are different things that will malign your destiny. So there are a lot of things required. But only a Christian who has died can travel the extra miles. Because only a dead Christian can legislate in the kingdom. The kingdom is not for living men, it's for dead men. The only life that springs out of them is the life of the Christ. The one that sits in the office of the Christos. It's not for dead men. Have you not noticed the operation of the sanctuary? When you enter through the gates, the gate is the full revelation of Jesus as the king, the son, the servant, and the, 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 the life of God. When you enter through the gate with thanksgiving, then you come to the altar of sacrifice. You place yourself there. 
when you have dropped yourself before you start legislation everybody can be in the outer court only the priest enter the inner court because before you enter the inner court you must come into relationship with the holy ghost in the lava where you wash your hand that is the sanctification of the holy spirit if you have not entered into intercourse with the holy spirit forget about kingdom legislation you are a babe you are not relevant for the equation of god in the world to come your name will not be mentioned that word is for overcomers everybody will be there but not everybody will be a captain not everybody will be relevant you journey there by salvation but you are relevant there by service you wash and you enter when you enter you begin to navigate do kingdom matters you receive strength from the table of shoe bread you receive illumination from the menorah that time there is no sunlight anymore in the outer court everybody can use the sunlight but in the inner court if you have not received light from the world you can't go forward because only the lampstand shines there and if you have journeyed to the point of the high priest after the altar of incense then you enter the holy of holies where true kingdom business is done there there is no light is the shakina that illuminates you you must have traveled into the spirit until you can see for yourself a lot of christians are not raised we have never journeyed anywhere we live for our appetites bogus appetites young people full of pride a generation of proud men we come and then we talk down on the fathers how can he say this this thing he said is wrong you have revelation that have not been proven your revelation have not discipled 10 people and you are you are you are correcting a bishop that have stood for 30 years do you know what it means to stand with god for 10 years you know what it means to stand for 20 years you have not even done your christian faith for two decades you are correcting a bishop in arrogance and folly that is why we die in our generation we are cut off because of our foolishness we know nothing we don't even labor to enter into the rest but we are willing to talk it is in the death that all your appetites and your ambition are sacrificed the holy ghost will take you there in the resurrection you enter into the newness of immortality it is in the resurrection that you have confidence to survive in the world to come. Paul said, if only in this life we have hope, we are of all men most miserable. He was not quoting from the Old Testament. That is what he caught when he was traveling with the Holy Spirit. He realized that the gate through the portals of the divine was the gate of revelation. Anybody that has crossed into the resurrection of Christ, he has hope. And if there is no resurrection, there is no Christianity. Paul was the one that told us that he didn't read it from anywhere. He caught it in the spiritual he discovered that the crucible of the christian faith is resting upon the resurrection if you have not caught the revelation of the resurrection there is no hope of immortality for you and that is why when you gave your life to christ what you confessed was the risen christ because in the resurrection you cross from the gateway of death into the regions of life immortality is factored into the revelation when you see christians that are not sure of tomorrow it's because they have not known the resurrection the holy ghost will carry you through those realities carry you through all those realities until you come to a point where you have apprehended the soul all of that is in jesus it is in the ascension oh my god it is in the ascension that authority is conferred have you seen christians that lack authority so much they have fasted for 30 days before coming for the meeting but they are still not sure the problem is not the activity they don't understand who they are in the ascended Christ. The ascension is another, is another dimension of reality that the Holy Ghost will take you to. All of that is factored into the economy of the administration of God. That is what the office of the Christ is currently doing. The office. The office of the Christ is responsible for the totality of the administration of heaven. It is by that office that you are giving a ministry. Have you not wondered why some people are in church for 15 years but they are not responsible? They are not in leadership. They just feel Christianity is come, take from God and go away. But the Bible says when Moses was come of age, when he was come of age, he refused to be called the son of Pharaoh's daughter. He chose rather to suffer affliction with the children of God than to enjoy the pleasures of Egypt that was for a season. He came of age. When you come to a point where the resurrection becomes real to you, then you begin to look for responsibility in the kingdom. That is why Jesus never gave any ministry office except as he was ascended. He said, him that ascended 
were descended was the same that ascended on her. And he said, as he ascended, he gave gifts unto men. To some, he gave to be apostles. Some, he gave to be prophets. Some, he gave to be evangelists. Some, he gave to be pastors and teachers for the perfecting of the sin. That question is a long age question of redemption. In Isaiah chapter 53, verse 1 and 8, the Bible says, Who has believed our report? Unto whom is the arm of the Lord revealed? And in verse 8, it says, Who shall declare his generation? The man that will declare his generation is the man that has caught the revelation of the risen Christ. He now knows that he's not in God only for what he can get. God also has need and is looking out for it to meet it. So he discovers himself worshipping God and crying. Worshipping God every day like a personal assignment. Why? He has come to a point where he knows that the Father is seeking true worshippers. He has come to a point where he has realized that his life, his life should be an extension for the pleasure of God. When John was carried to heaven, he saw the 20 and 4 elders fall to the ground, worshipping. Fall to the ground, watch. The man was left in total oblivion. Is this not heaven where people come to rest? The Bible said the four beasts, they worship in day and night. Forever and ever. And then the 20 and 4 elders that were already seated on throne, they will cast their crown and fall on the ground flat. What is happening here? I thought heaven is a place of fun and pleasure. We suffered on earth so that when we die, we'll come to heaven and rest. No, you don't rest in heaven. Heaven is a place of ministry. That's what he caught the elders doing. They were worshipping him. Worshipping him that is called holy. Holy, holy, holy. Separate. You are different. You are in your own class. You see, the angels don't have a word for God. They, they can't even give him a name. They only call him, you are separate in your own class. You are in your own class. Because every day they see him, the illumination becomes brighter. They see many dimensions. They can't understand which being is this. They say, holy, holy. You don't know the privilege that you have as a man. And you don't know the opportunity that you have in time. When you get to heaven, that is when most of us will realize what we have wasted in time. Are you aware that the angels don't know God by experience? They are like, what they have is what was configured into them. The only way God can be known is by his spirit. Only man has the spirit of God. That is why the Bible said in Ephesians 3.10 that the principalities shall watch as the church will teach them the exceeding mysteries of God. It was man that said God is love. It was man that said God is light. It was man that said God is powerful. The only thing the angels call God is holy. The word holy is not a name. It means being your own class. Separated unto your own name. There is none like you. They don't know you. They look upon your life to learn about God. But you are here wasting away because you refuse to follow the Holy Ghost. How do you expect to become relevant? We were coming and my friend told me in the car. He said, imagine the population in Kaduna alone. He said, serving God was not about heaven. He said... How do we even expect to survive with this kind of competition? Even if serving God was only for this life, how can one survive with this kind of competition? The only advantage we have is the spirit we fraternize with. Fraternity with spirit is what constitutes an advantage in time. That's why you see somebody selling pure water and say millionaire. It's not about the pure water. It's a spirit. It's a spirit. And spirit life is not given to verbosious and very large exegetical explanation. It is making a choice to follow. If it is so hard, God will not expect every man to do it. So it's not a function of very difficult and intrinsic languages. It is weaved into every man. Every one of us hear him. Jesus said, my sheep heareth my voice. Everyone. The question is the question of obedience. Will you follow the Holy Spirit? The people that know the risen Christ, they don't know him because they are special. They knew him because they started traveling with the Holy Spirit. There was a point in their life when all they knew was the fact that Jesus was the Son of God. Then they would come and say, do you know the Son of God? They kept following the Holy Ghost. A day came, suddenly, it dawned on them that Jesus was their healer. A day came, it dawned on them that Jesus 
was their life. A day came, it dawned on them that Jesus was the reason they were living. They carried their Bible and began to preach. If Jesus is the reason I'm living, I will do his will. So it is a journey with the Holy Spirit. It's not a function of study. It's not a function of, 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 of so much learning or traveling. From where you are in your niche, if you will subscribe to the Holy Spirit, a strange dimension can break out upon your life. I've read stories about great men of God. Great women of God. People like Katrin Kuma. A woman that could not as much as find a man to love her genuinely. That was the level of rejection she suffered. But there was the Holy Ghost waiting for her to make her a spectre in her generation. The day she subscribed, if you listen to her, you will be sleeping. She, could, she did not as much as have a very effective way of communication. But all she had was the Spirit. And by the Spirit, she shook her world. It's the question of obedience. From where you are, are you willing to subscribe? Because there is a long journey the Holy Ghost will take you. And it's not a function of time, it's a function of realities. The encounters that you have is what will make you become that which you only imagine. Jesus is the Son of God. Jesus is the Savior. Jesus is the Christ. And Jesus is the Lord. That's the last revelation that launches you into the realm of power. Jesus the Lord. How many know Jesus the Lord? You see, the Bible says Jesus is the author and the finisher of our faith. What it means is not just that Jesus is the one that bets faith on your inside. No. What it also means is that Jesus is the example of faith that we follow from the beginning to the end. The only way he entered into power was by absolute obedience. Absolute obedience. When he began, he came to John the Baptist. John had hyped him. The one that cometh, even the latchet of his hand, I'm not worthy to untie. <laughs> and then here comes Jesus and knelt down to be baptized. And John said, No, 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 no. I should be baptized of you. He says, Suffer it to be so for now. Thus it becometh of us to fulfill all righteousness. He finished, and the Bible said he was driven into the wilderness by the Holy Ghost to be tempted of the devil. He followed. And when that sequence of trials was completed, he returned in the power of the Spirit. And the power he returned with was the power to serve in humble obedience. You will think that now that he has power, he can do what he wishes, but he was still a slave of the Holy Spirit. So the Bible said, because of this kind of obedience, he said, God has given him a name that is above every other name. That at the mention of the name of Jesus, every knee shall bow. It's not because he did something in warfare. He didn't fight the spirit. He didn't fight humanity. He only obeyed the Holy Ghost. He obeyed to a point where he said, at the mention of that name, every knee will bow. Why you have authority is not because of your proclamation. It's not because of the warfare you stand on the street. Or the rage you rage when you carry the microphone. Is the extent of obedience and submission you give yourself to in the privacy and the quarters where you rest your head in your private chambers. A lot of rebelliousness. But when we come to church, we are all an example to be followed. Apostle told us, he said the hallmark of the Christian faith is secret purity, strict righteousness, and generous kindness to others. Because of his obedience, he said, God has given him a name that is above every other name. At the mention of the name of Jesus, every knee bows. Every tongue confesses that Jesus is the Lord. The name is not Jesus. The name is the Lord. Because Jesus was given when he was born. The name is what? That Jesus is the Lord. The Lord is Jehovah. The Almighty. And because he's the author and the finisher of your faith, that part he has crafted is what you and I will follow. A point came where we sprang out, all of us praying for power. 
power, power, power. God give us power. We must have power. But when understanding began to come to us, when understanding began to come to us, that was when we realized that power is not what you pray for. You become it through obedience. You become it through obedience. And most of us came into our rest. So the extent of obedience that you give in is the extent of power that you receive. Will you yield to the Holy Spirit? Some of us here, the, the Lord have been perturbing us for many days, many months. Many months. Some is, you wake up and then you feel a leading to fast. But you don't. Meanwhile, whenever they give a fasting week in church, you want to show that you are the only one that completes the fast. What you are doing is that you are fertilizing your appetite. You are strengthening the flesh. The secret instruction that comes to you from the Holy Spirit is what will change your life. You go out there, you want to engage in the quarrel. He says, hmm. But you go ahead. That's why you will remain where you are for a long time. For a very long time. Power is not what you necessarily pray for. Power is a thing you become through obedience. As you follow the Holy Spirit, He will carry you through these four different chambers of God. He will introduce you to Jesus the Son where your conviction is strengthened and you have confidence in God beyond everything. He will introduce you to Jesus the Savior where you have an assurance beyond anything that happens to you or comes your way. He will introduce you to the Christ where you will have the needed assurance and capacity to serve Him in an acceptable fashion. And then He will introduce you to Jesus the Lord where you have authority over the contrary forces that fights against advancing the purposes of God. This you don't come into by doctrine. You don't know it by doctrine. You know it by experience. And you only come into this reality as you follow the Holy Spirit. As you follow the Holy Spirit, He will guide you there. He says, how be it when the Spirit of truth is come, He will guide us into all realities. Can we bow our heads as we begin to pray? Today is just to set the coordinates. So that we will prepare our hearts. That the goal is not performance. The goal is becoming. The first layer of power that came upon you was power to become. He said, as many as received it, to them he gave power. To become the sons of God. And you cannot become except as you begin to see and interface with the person of Jesus. The multifaceted dimension of his reality. You must begin to see him. You must begin to see him. You must begin to see him. He said, behold what manner of love the Father has bestowed upon us. That we should be called the sons of God. It does not yet matter what we shall be like. He said, but when we shall see him, we shall be like him. That's an apostle that have operated in the highest realm of power. But he knew that what was important to God was becoming. You can be a Christian for one month and you will begin to see him and become like him. You can be a Christian for 10 years and you may never have seen him. You may never have been like him. And in the privacy of your heart, you know that you are far. Christianity is not an act. It's not an activity. It is the operation of divinity in a, hum in a human vessel. The extent to which God can find expression through you is the measure of your maturity in the faith. The extent of which you have become like Him is who you truly are in the Spirit. I'm delighted tonight because there are many young people here. You have heard a lot of things, heard a lot of revelation, heard a lot of rema. But what have you become? Those private things you do in your private chambers, will you be bold to do them in the public? Those are the things that count with God. It's not the things you say to the public. It's not the things you do to the public. Before God, that's the question of all ages. If you come, be outstanding as we pray to the Ghost. The 
transforming power of God is about to hit the building. The transforming power is about to hit the building. to do what I have to do next. And we have it quiet for a moment. I want to give some persons an opportunity. You see, you may have been so involved in so many activities. You may even be a leader. But you know that in the privacy of your heart, you are far. You are far. Because you don't really know this Jesus. Maybe you know the Son of God, but you don't know the Savior. Maybe you know the Savior, but you don't know the Christ. Because you don't know the Christ, you have been rebellious in the place of service. I want to give an opportunity to few persons who want to make it right with God. You want to receive that empowerment for service tonight. You want the Holy Spirit to lead you into that place of experience. The experience of God. You see, you can be in the Spirit. John was in the Spirit in the Isle of Patmos. But he heard a voice. He said, come up here. There are deeper places in God. You want to journey to those places. I want to give you an opportunity. To step out tonight. And I will pray with you. You see, the greatest things don't happen where people are shaking and falling most of the time. 
I know the cause to touch, to throw everybody under the power. I know the call to touch, to get everybody so fascinated that they don't even hear what I'm saying. But they will be so fascinated. But we want something tangible to begin to happen in the lives of people. We are a young generation. We must know God by experience. The fathers knew him experientially. That was why they had impact. They are not quoting scriptures the way we are quoting. They are not talking in arrogance the way we are talking. For them to conquer nations, to shatter the foundations of kingdom, was because they knew their God. A lot of us don't know Jesus. A lot don't know Jesus. And it doesn't matter what you are doing in church. It doesn't matter where you are in church, where you are seated in church. It doesn't matter who knows you. The question is, are you on the registers of heaven? I want you to make a commitment to Jesus. Talk to him now. I will serve you with all my heart. I will serve you with all my might. As you make that commitment, very soon the power of God will begin to rest upon people. <laughs> Just make that commitment. I don't want it to be an emotional thing. I don't want it to be an emotional thing. You know, we know this song. Sometimes when we sing songs that are that touches our emotion. We, we respond by emotion. We don't know. We think it's the spirit. Make a conscious commitment to Jesus. Make a commitment. Make a commitment. Some of you will find yourself, you will begin to weep. Not because anybody tried to do anything emotional. The compassion of Jesus will begin to overwhelm you. Overwhelm you. Overwhelm you. Overwhelm you. A deep commitment. It's a deep commitment. I don't want to worship my mama. It's a deep commitment. Very deep. I Make a commitment to Jesus tonight. This is the most important part of the meeting. You, you stop praying now. Now you stop praying. Stop praying. Stop praying now. I want to pray for you now. The hand of God will come upon you. Some of you, it will break hardness in your heart. Some of you, it will trigger conviction. Some of you, the compassion of the Holy Ghost will overwhelm you. Some of you will even begin to receive activation of spiritual gifts now. Precious Holy Spirit. You know, we've not come to do an emotional thing or a religious activity. Look upon the hearts of your children that have come to make a commitment to you. Touch them now. Touch them now. Touch them. Touch them. Touch them. Touch! Holy Ghost. <laughs>
our life. Ever pouring in all the things of life. Access to my strength, wisdom, capacity that we we'll live here with the needed abilities to advance in your kingdom in this time. Take all the glory, take all the praise in Jesus' precious name. Amen. In the precious name of Jesus. I know your hunger is strong, your expectations are high. Um, but we need to calm down for a moment. Let's draw some lines. Tonight we will fly. <laughs> Telling you. You know, while you were ministering in the morning, before I left the hall, the Holy Ghost whispered to my ears. He said, this evening, He will allow some of the patriots, the spirit of just men, to participate in this service because of the emphasis is bringing listen most of you will enter into economies in the spirit that you will not understand again for the rest of your life you will literally be regulated by the things you will enter into and your life will become a parable that God will tell to this generation so I need to carefully draw the lines so that you gain understanding enough to interpret your experiences and to submit to them in the name of Jesus Christ. You may be seated. God bless you. Salute your neighbor. By the left and the right, say welcome in the name of Jesus. Again, it's my privilege this evening to be here. This gathering is made possible by the Holy Ghost through his servant, Reverend and Mrs. Tolua Logo Agbola. Such a great honor. Honor you greatly. Appreciate your, your love for the kingdom and your services and labor of love. My friend, Pastor Rasim Irem, came all the way from Ibadan. I know Ibadan is very far, but he came for like two hours. Traveled all the way to be part of this session. We are grateful to God. All the ministers in the house, thank you so much for being a part of what God is doing here. My precious brother, Pastor Judah. Please, I know him by name. Beautiful preacher and teacher of the word of God. Thank you all for coming. And of course, my covenant brother, Pastor Victor. The roaring intercessor. Some of the things I'll share tonight will make you understand why people are, are different in the kingdom. In the days of David, they say some of them, their faces were like lions. You will see such dimensions, and many of you will enter tonight in the name of Jesus Christ. When I came in last night, I just spread, decided to spread the net to drag everybody in to trigger a consciousness and to draw your attention to the urgency of the now. What God is doing is strategic and is very urgent. This is why the Lord will not lower his hand in dealing with you until you are chiseled enough to handle the glory that is coming to bear the burden 
that should be born and to steward the move of God for your generation. What is coming is massive. It's big and it's enormous. A people must be prepared. It's not Christianity as usual. There are levels of awareness and consciousness that must be activated on our inside. There are levels of preparation that we must be given to. And there are depths of sacrifices that must be made. If we will be able to host what is coming and to steward it correctly. This is why my emphasis for last night was death. Death to everything experientially that is of the old creation. And I told you there are many circumstances that God will carry you through in order to come to that point where you no longer give allowance to the old creation to find expression. Legally, you are saved. Legally, you are part of the kingdom of God. But experientially, committer of responsibility is a function of the degree of debt that you have accepted to the old creation. There are certain things God cannot commit to you if you are still a liar. There are certain things God cannot commit to you if you are still a fornicator. There are certain things God cannot commit to you. We know that in Christ Jesus you are forgiven. But experientially, you must come to a point where you beat your body to come into conformity with the direction of the Spirit. That is when God can commit glory, authority, and dimensions of His possibility to your hands. So when we bring the message of alignment, the message of judgment is not to tell you you are a sinner. It is to awaken the lion in you. Because when that economy of eternal life was imparted into your spirit man, all the possibilities in Christ Jesus that was bequeathed your ordination was granted you. Your taking up responsibility to tame the flesh is what will bring you into walking in it experientially. So irresponsible Christianity cannot be tolerated at this time. This is why I revealed to us last night by the Holy Spirit the strategy of the devil not for the world but to keep the believers in place of bondage even though they have liberty in Christ. I showed us everything the devil is doing to stop us from entering into the essence of our ordination. There will be many dead lions there will be many sleeping warriors and there have been but it's time to wake up. If you understand that there is encroachment around your borders, if you understand that there is infiltration, if you understand that there is suffocation, you will wake up and take the disposition of warfare. This is why I showed us the quadrant that God is raising. Missionaries baptized with the spirit of martyrdom. Ready to take the kingdom to the ends of the earth and to advance the frontiers of the kingdom even if their lives were to be threatened if all we know about God is to come on Sunday morning and open our hands to receive prophecies then we will not have missionaries in Afghanistan if all we know is to open our hands to receive blessings and impartations to receive promises we will not have missionaries in Meiduguri and the point will come even here in Ogomosho many will run away because at the instance of attack, everybody will run from their place of security and guard. Men must rise. This is the burden of the emphasis. Intercessors must be willing to embrace the way of the cave. Having come into understanding that what they are doing may not provide gratification in time. It may not provide fulfillment in time. It might not. But they know the eternal implication of what they are doing. That the move of God for their generation is upon their shoulders and the energy that they can produce for the men that are in front of the battle. So they will commit themselves there, even if it comes to a point where there is nothing to eat and drink. It's the spirit of martyrdom. Many don't have it. If we continue building houses, and of course there's nothing wrong with it, at the expense of praying and raising warriors, a point will come where our land will become like Afghanistan. And men will prefer to live in caves instead of the houses they have built. Because there will be more security in the cave than in the house. Such days are upon us. 
This is why men need to wake up. Intercessors must rise. And God raises merchants among us. This morning we decided to add another layer and we started talking about spiritual growth. There were six things I wanted to look at that makes for spiritual growth and development. But we were trapped on the capsule of prayer and we could not go forward. And this evening I want to drive from there a bit more. Because the truth is that, like Reverend Tolu was saying, there is a place you enter in the spirit where loss will die. There is a place you enter in the spirit where trust is imparted like an injection. There is a place you enter in the spirit where faith is imparted. There is a place you enter in the spirit where wisdom is granted you. So you come and you speak with the wisdom of the ancient, not because you learned it. Paul will tell us clearly that the gospel I preached was not taught me of any man. I received it from the Lord. So there is a place you enter where you receive the message for your generation. All of these possibilities are there. And if God will help us to chisel in on prayer enough to raise a generation that is willing to pray, then part of the job is done. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Four things prayer does quickly as we begin to advance. You know, sometimes when you teach like this, it looks as if you are advocating for poverty, for pain, for penury. But the truth is, if we don't come into terms with these things, a point will come where everything we gather will be for the sons of the bondwoman. Have you not heard them come to your land and tell you, don't worry, be building these churches, they belong to us. Have you not heard that? Have you not heard them tell you before, buy these lands, you will take them over. Have you not heard that before? While you are here planning on how to live a comfortable life, some of them are almajiris for the past 10 years. Learning how to trust and to depend on what they believe. And a point comes where dying for it becomes an honor. Whereas we have a set of Christians that all they come to God for is what they can receive. To nurture their appetites. So no kingdom, kingdom men are not being raised. And it's a crisis. It's a challenge. Because we think God is out to meet our needs. And that is all God is willing to do. We never knew or were never taught that there is a kingdom to advance. When God created man, he sorted out all his needs. That means your need is not part of the reason why you deal with that ancient spirit. He gave Adam everything he ever needed before he started doing business with Adam. So the business of God is beyond meeting your needs. Adam was in a garden where he lacked nothing. So if all you come to God for is your need, then you have not seen the bigger picture. There's a kingdom to advance. Imagine what Adam's fellowship is, is about. In a garden where everything you think and imagine is already available. What then was the weight of Adam's fellowship? Why was God coming to Adam in the cool of the day and he was doing it every day? Why? There was a kingdom to advance. Is there anything wrong with God meeting your needs? No. He said he has given us exceeding great and precious promises that by them we might escape the corruption that is in the world through lust. But when we receive these things, what are they meant for? This is where kingdom comes in. And this evening, as we look at prayer, I want to show you four dimensions of prayer. Four requirements for prayer in doing kingdom business as a mark of growth. For this season as a mark of responsibility for this season as a mark of qualification for this season i tell you if you can't pray now you are not part of what god is doing make no mistakes about it if you are not praying you are not part of what god is doing you can be a preacher you can be anything no matter how spiritual it looks because accuracy at this time can only be fathomed on the altar of prayer this is why we emphasize this again and again and again and we will not stop. And I will show you how God blesses men in the last day. The blessings of God in the last day is deeper than this surface doctrine of giving and receiving. I will show you how God blesses men in the last day so you will understand why we emphasize what we emphasize. 
what we are up against is a warfare that will not end until the elements of this world melt. So we can build confidence on things that have their substance in the elements of this realm. Our confidence must be built in the spirit. And anybody that doesn't understand the intelligence of spiritual interaction is not relevant in this time. When we begin to pray, the first thing that happens to us is that we sustain the potential of hosting the dimensions of God. Because God wants to enter this realm and to advance his agenda. But God can only be hosted by men that have created a premise for him through prayer. This is why the Bible said in Isaiah chapter 40 verse 28, it said, have you not heard? Has it not been said to you that the everlasting God fainted not, neither is he weary? He giveth power to the faint, and unto them that have no might, he increaseth strength. He said, even the youth shall faint and shall utterly fall. But they that wait upon the Lord, something happens to them. God didn't give them bread and wine. God didn't give them a job opportunity. He said, first, they mount up with wings like the eagles. Then they run. They don't faint. They walk. They are not weary. What is happening? They are beginning to mingle with divinity until they become express representation of the dimension of the invincible God. So they pray to a level where everything God wants to do, they become an extension of God. That man is superior to the man that has one million in his account. Because if God needs to do something that needs one million, one million will come. It will, if it will take the east wind to bring one million, it will bring it. If it will take angels to bring one million into his bedroom, it will show up. This is how men that rule this world operate. They know that wealth and everything they need is to advance the agenda of spirit. And the Bible says, they that wait upon the Lord, they that embrace the economy of prayer, something happens to them, they become a host to God. So they wake up every morning, there is a dimension of God they represent. There is no way you can fight them. These men become institutions in this realm to defend the heritage of God as touching the dimension that they represent. See, tomorrow, so long as Benihim in this world, the healing anointing will function. He is not just anointed to heal. He is representative of the healing dimensions of God. I heard a story told by Benihim how that Kenneth Copeland spoke against him and took ill. The father of faith, he spoke against him and took ill. Prayed, deep faith confession, gave seed, everything he knew to do, he was not being healed. And he told God, why am I not being healed? You know, these are men that talk with God. They don't only exercise their faith based on scripture. They can ask God, what is going on? And God said, you touched my servant Benihim. What do you mean? Those, these men are hosts. They are hosts of God. That's why you can see Benihim enter Afghanistan and organize a citywide crusade and gather two million people. Go and try it. You are also a preacher. So in your own sphere of influence, you can never have kingdom impact until you host God to the degree that can affect your sphere of influence. So when we pray, there is a kingdom to advance and we know it's not a possibility until we can host the measure of God that can carry out that mandate that is upon our lives. You wake up and you realize that your life is of no value unless there is a certain mandate that you begin to represent and there is a measure of God that must be hosted. The Bible spoke concerning David. After that he served the will of God, he rested with his fathers. So the life of a man can be summarized as the will of God. A king, a prophet, a service, a wealthy man. He was guarded with wealth to his teeth, but his life was summarized as the will of God. After that he served the will of God, he rested. There's a dimension of the will of God that your life represents, but you need to host God. Every time you need to go further in this kingdom, there's a level of saturation that we make for it. This is why we pray. Because everything about us depends on it. Our growth in the kingdom depends on the quality of our prayer. What is the concentration of God in your life? Prayer 
makes room in your spirit man, your soul rather, to host God in his full dimensions. And as you begin to saturate with God, what happens is that God begins to quicken hunger, appetite in your soul. That's when you discover that the spirit realm is not apart from us. It's rather a place to be explored. When you see a man show up and things happen, he's an astronaut in the spirit realm. What he's coming to do is to download the dimensions he saw. You quoted the scripture, Exodus chapter 25, chapter 40, verse 9 and 25. He said, Ensure to build according to the pattern that was revealed to you on the mount. The guy had stayed with God until intimacy was beginning to open him, open him up to dimensions. God needed to dwell with his people, but there is a dimension. And that dimension, there is no creativity that can produce it. A man must travel in the spirit until he sees it. And then through wisdom, he can download the same on the earth. So Moses' interaction with God did not only bring him to a place of saturation. The heavens now began to open to him. And then suddenly he discovered that everything in the visible creation is a product of spiritual download. What you see on your campus is a product of spiritual download. People don't wake up overnight and want to dress naked. It's a download. There are priests in darkness that downloaded them to your borders. That is why even those who don't want to, they have no choice. The lady came in after three weeks suddenly she discovers the clothes she came from came from home with are no longer fitting all of a sudden her fashion changed her orientation changed she has come under a radar there's an energy level territorial energy level that regulates her choices three weeks on campus she's already struggling to keep her virginity what is happening the lady was modest for 17 years how come three weeks have become stronger than 17 years of tutelage energy Downloads in territories that her soul does not have the capacity to resist. She showed up. She was proud about her virginity. But by the time she's in 200 level, you say how far? And she shakes her head. Is she still a Christian? Yes. But she doesn't understand the technology of download. But men that host God, even if you come and stand naked, they will tell you, go away, you are wasting your time. You know why? Even their appetites have been mortified by the volume of God they have downloaded. So things don't move them. You can wake up and you are talking your slangs. They are not moved. It doesn't apply to them. Even when they are in the bus and you are singing the raining song, they didn't hear it. The song is loud in the bus but they can't hear. Even their ears are now blocked to the world system because of download. Download, download, download. You show up, everybody's naked. Why some guys are struggling to say, Oh boy, you need to be disciplined now. Who told you discipline can keep you? What you need is saturation. What you need is download. Because if you open Facebook, they are there. Open WhatsApp, they are there. Go to the lecture, they are there. Go to the market, they are there. How can you go about it? Every day, photographs coming from Hades in the form of ladies and men. Photographs. Sometimes you go to the airport, if your flight is delayed, you need to be speaking in tongues. Or put an earpiece. Because we see madness, madness in high quarters. Then you discover that you need to be saturated with God. You need to be full of Him. Everywhere you go, let God come out of you like an aroma. Because you have downloaded too much. They will come around you, rather they will be the one interacting with the energy coming out of you. If you greet them, they are in trouble. If you talk to them, they are in trouble. Because download. Download. They that wait upon the Lord is the strategy of the now. There's no matching order until we raise men that can download God. The reason we stay for long in the place of prayer is not for the fun of tongues. It's not for the pride that we can pray long. We know that to survive, we must become hosts. Hosts. Some host God until they become spiritual routers. If they come to a place and they speak, everybody around is caught with conviction. The walls pierce their heart. Did you not read about Peter and the apostles? Tarry in Jerusalem until you are endued with power from on high. They tarried for long. 
Bible history tells us it is for 10 days because it was 40 days into 50 days between Pentecost. They tarried there until the saturation was so much. When Peter stood up and spake, 3,000 men were caught in their heart. Men and brethren, what shall we do? You know who that person is? He's a router. He's a router. You can come on Facebook and you write something. You don't need to preach. You wrote something and put online because it came from your spirit. Anybody that sees it, he loses his sleep. Is download. The reason you are struggling with what you are struggling is because the download is not yet complete. There's a measure of God that if you carry, lost will die. You will be traveling and you say, Come, oh, but when was the last time I thought about somebody? It's download. 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 There's a measure. There's a measure you need to download from heaven. You will wake up and then angels are singing everywhere. You are hearing songs until you are now distracted. You say, Wait, rest. You guys should wait first. I want to read. I want to read. You don't know what is happening. When we are walking, you are the one that thinks everybody is the same. There are some men that their ear is open to breaking news from heaven. Because of download. Download. They choke themselves with God until they want to suffocate. Every time they cough, it's God that comes out. That's how to survive in the last day. The Christians in the last day are downloaders. They are routers. They are not men coming to tell you so much, to make it so much effort for you to believe God. Hear them, you are implicated. You will go home, the words they speak will travel with you. The next time you want to lie, that thing will come like an amplifier. I told you, those days, oh, after my mom died, I said Christianity is fake. And now followed my friends to the club. I wanted to test of the war. And suddenly, as we stood in the club, I heard the wages of sin is death. The wages of sin is death. <laughs> you know why? My mom had downloaded God so much, so she said, Use him. Everywhere I went, that word followed me and implicated me. I was implicated. That's why I told you this microphone was put in my hand because somebody with a downloaded version spoke. This is why the elders of old, when they show up, they say, Gather around me. Yes, sons of Jacob, sit round me, yes, sons of Israel. I will tell you the things that will befall you. Is that a man talking? He was not prophesying, he was not blessing, he was shaping their destiny. He began with Reuben, and he told Reuben in Genesis 49, from verse 2, he said, You are the beginning of my strength. Excellency and wisdom is what you were fabricated with in the eternities of God. He was telling Reuben. When God created Reuben, these were the dimensions that God weaved into Reuben. Reuben was supposed to be a man of wisdom and excellence. He said, but because of what you did, I have changed it in time. As unstable as water, you will not prosper. You know why? Download. Download. They can talk to you and change your destiny. They can look at you and say, as you are going now, you are supposed to die. Because they are current with heaven. But as I speak, for the next 30 years, you will change your world. And heaven will back it up. Download. We can't change our world until we download God into our spirit. Download. That's why we talk, nothing happens. We are many. We can't change the intensity of darkness in the territory. There are no downloads. When we download God, five of us can hold hands and we can push back immorality from our campus. Because when we speak, the energy level will choke the campus. Ladies will be in their hostel and conviction will hit them. You will pack your clothes and burn them. Did you not read about Paul? He said, after the manner of flesh, I fought the beast of Ephesus. And the ministry of Paul spread so much. Men wanted to copy him. He said, the sons of Sceva, they went to adjure the demon in the name of Jesus that Paul preached. They failed, yet the Bible said many, they fear, fear hit them. And those that had curious books, they brought them together and they burnt them. What was going on? 
one man entered the spirit with so much download, the router he created was sufficient to tame darkness in the land. Did you not read about Samuel? The Bible said the borders of Ramah. The borders of Ramah was saturated with the prophetic anointing. So much so that Paul that came to kill him, the download was too much. Samuel doesn't need weapons to fight. What he mastered is download. That's why in Hebrews chapter 11, when they were calling warriors, they called Samuel. He doesn't need weapons. He doesn't need spare. All he needed is download. And the Bible says so long as Samuel knew, the hand of God was perpetually against the Philistine. Those ones, it's angels that fight for them. Why you need to train an army? They are certain men. Did you not hear in the Bible that in the days of war, angels were throwing stones at the enemy? Angels were throwing stones. We cannot fight in the last day until we enter into partnership with the heavens. Download. You can come to a city, you walk back that city, and you pass with 12 angels. Those angels will be doing things that you are not even aware of. Why would David come and say, Cursed be the mountains of Gibeah, for you did not rise up in the day of trouble? How come? Who told him that mountains fight? He talks from realms where mortars don't travel to. Download. Why would the brother show up and say, Cursed be Mazarot? For you did not rise up in the day of trouble. How? How did they know? Download. Let the sun remain upon the mountains of Gibeah, and the moon upon the mountains of Ajalo. And the Bible said the sun did not make haste to go down for the period of one day. There have never been a day like that. Neither will there ever be in the day that God hearkened to the voice of a man. Download. You can do something that the jealousy of God becomes your inheritance. When you speak, you provoke the jealousy of God. Download. This is why we need men that can host heaven. They can host God. We have too many preachers. We have too many prophets. We have too many apostles. What we need now are men that carry God in tangible measures. Ah, 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 ah. I was managing my voice so I can teach in this evening. When I started praying, the angels began to whisper to my ears. And I was screaming. I was screaming. Oh, 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 oh. Hey, hey. Because they were breaking news. Victor came and said, stop, stop. You won't kill your voice. I said, I can't. There is somebody is talking. Somebody is whispering. It's so loud. Download from heaven. You walk into places. Corridors. And then when you speak, your voice becomes like the voice of many waters. You speak with the tongue of the angels. Because of download. When we pray, we download God into our soul. Second thing prayer does is what we call spiritual networking. If your friends on earth are more than your friends in the spirit, you are weak. <laughs> I come as one man, but I fight with the strength of many. They be said by God, I ran through a troop. I leaped over walls. You know what's going on? You have no idea. Oh! <laughs> hey, yeah, yeah! I just pray that what I'm sharing makes sense to you. I pray. You will go to prayer and you will sit there, sit there. You are exploring the spirit realm. Spiritual networking. I started sharing with you in the morning. Why do you think John, uh, John will need to stay in the wilderness all his life just to show up and say repent? What does it take to say repent? It takes more than talking. He needed spiritual networking. He was coming in the spirit of Elijah. 
and he needed to stay in the wilderness. That anointing refabricated his nature. That anointing changed his culture. That anointing changed his dress code. He said he was dressed in camel skin. Feeding on white honey. What is going on? He needed to become like the Elijah he came to represent. It's called spiritual networking. So you can come as a 15 year old. You came for the conference. The bishops are sitting. They say come and share. And they are like well. What they are doing is that they are weighing you based on your age. They don't know that in the spirit you are talking with the voice of Babalola. So you are older than everybody there. It's a dimension in God. When you cry. Is the voice of an ancient spirit because you have networked in the spirit. He said, Behold, how beautiful and pleasant it is for brethren to dwell together in harmony. There's a network, it's like the dew upon Mount Hermon. First, he began, he said, It's like the oil upon the head of Aaron, down to his beard, onto his skin. That's natural fellowship, that's natural networking. So, I can show because um, Elijah is a teacher. When we pray in the spirit, something can happen. I connect with the spirit and a major comes to me. He is a prophet. When we pray, a major comes to me because the heavens are open. Through his vista, I can enter and see. Natural networking. So the same intensity that the guy at the head is feeling, the one at the beard is feeling, the one at the skirt is feeling, then he migrated to a higher level. He said it's like the deal upon Mount Hermon. That time, our interaction have migrated from the earth. We are now fraternizing with entities in Zion. That's why I said, you have come to Mount Zion, the city of the living God, to an innumerable company of angels, to where the spirit of just men is made perfect. You can pray now, and you will discover that you will connect with Apostle Paul in the spirit. I read stories about Sadhu Sanvaraj. The guy reading the book of Isaiah, and suddenly, Isaiah comes out through the wall. What do you mean? Where are you coming from? The networking of the spirit. Where are you coming from? You think we can fight darkness by just preaching the Bible? You don't know. There are things that have been built into the spirit realm for our advantage. Some of us need to connect with Elijah. Some of us need to connect with Jeremiah. Some of us need to connect with ancestors and patriarchs of old that caught covenant with God and won victories in Israel. We will connect to their heritages in God, but that fraternity is in the spirit. There are many who don't know it. Why do you think these men are talking differently and it looks as if they are going in a different direction? The church is not even aware. Study him and John will show up and tell him that the abomination of desolation is now. Is that man reading the same Bible you are reading? He is reading and networking in the spirit. I heard Pastor Chris Joachim. He said the greatest dimension of word of knowledge for him is not to even discern people's ailments. He said when he studies the Bible, God carries him to the time when those things happen. So while you are reading about David and Goliath, somebody else is studying and God jacks him back in time and then he's watching the battle. When he's explaining to you it's different, he can bring you the presence of that warfare. That's why some men open scripture. You are not only educated, they bring the atmosphere of the event to the hall. Fraternity in the spirit. You know why we labor in prayer? Because we know that our advantage is on the mountains of Zion. Your advantage is not on earth. It's in Zion. And you must find your place there. Was it not John that was writing? I had already written scriptures. Wrote John, the Gospel of John. Wrote first, second, and third John. But he wanted to write Revelation. They say you can't write this book on earth. This particular one, you can't write it on earth. You must come to heaven first. And John was carried to heaven. John had a tour around heaven. They carried John to the beginning of time. They carried John to the end of time. And the same John that had already written four books. We now say if you read this book you are blessed. He brought salutation from heaven. Before he began to write. Are you not the one that wrote the other scriptures? Why must you go to heaven to write revelation? Matters of the last day warfare. Require networking with the angelic. It requires networking. With the spirit of just men made perfect. You can't do business of the last day. With just your intelligence. You can't do business of the last day. With only inspiration. 
there must be networking in the spirit everybody that is part of this army they know what i'm talking about teaching priesthood you can't teach it by studying exodus and hebrews or leviticus you will meet men in the spirit they will educate you on what priesthood is about spirituality will migrate this is why i told you only dead men can do this business only dead men paul will tell you i know a man many years ago whether in the body or in the flesh i know not but he was carried to the third heaven so when paul is speaking you think he's intelligent The beautiful thing is that everything a man enters in the past is a dispensation in the latter. So if Enoch entered into rapture by intimacy, rapture is a dispensation for us. So the experiences individuals had, we can now have them as companies. This is why I'm telling you that your prayer is beyond asking God for bread and wine. There's a networking you must have. Some of you will not manifest until you meet your partners in the spirit. You will pray and then you will suddenly collide with Deborah. And she will tell you, come on. This is how we do it. This is how we do it. You can't rule among men unless you have a place in Zion. Everybody doing something great today. He knows where he has traveled to. Ben him said, if you go in there, the realm will come out with you. You are the one that thinks it's about quoting scriptures. Every scripture you read is a gateway into the spiritual. If you pray enough, those doors will open. That's when you will see that wisdom is a place in heaven. We cannot confound the devil if all our business is terrestrial. We need spiritual networking. When you see people making things happen, there's no coincidence about it. They know. They know. They know. They have met people. They've seen things in the realm. Networking. That's why you must pray until something shifts. Else you will not be relevant. When I told you if you are not praying now, you can't be part of what God is doing. I was not joking. Most of you are hearing these things. They are strange. Some can even call it mysticism. Some can call it spiritism. They have no understanding of the battle of the age. They have no understanding. Yeah. Uh-huh. 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 It's not enough to be knowledgeable, brothers. Our advantage is in the spirit. Why do you think David won 44 battles? It's not because he has the strongest army. He knew when the Mambri tree moves. He knows when the armies of Zion march on. Why do you think Joshua conquered? When he does his apostolic mapping, he meets beings in the spirit. These are not stories. These are strategies for the church in the last day. He knows when the armies have gone ahead. So that time, even if you throw stones, we win. The advantage is in the spirit. If you have not prayed to a level where you break out of time, if you have not prayed to a level where you break the influence of time, all you will have are downloaded versions of reality. You can never have anything in this kingdom. This message is not for everybody. It's for those that have the mark. They are the ones I'm talking to. There are some that will survive by principles. But there are certain men, the weight of their ordination will require that they are summoned to the heavens. Come up, Peter! Come up, Peter! You think Moses is just leading because he was called? There's a level where your call must drag you into depths. The people that did that thing you are doing before you, they will tell you the secrets and the strategies. They will hand over instruction manuals to you. They will give you mantles in the spirit. They will give you wisdom capsules to conquer.
this is why your weakness is not a disadvantage forget it nobody is weak pray you will find your colleagues in the spirit you can come to a meeting and your brothers come with you and when you stand and you say lord bless them you'll be amazed those who are walking your angels and your partners men that bore this message that you preach over the generation they will come back to bear witness reverend chris wanted to preach total experience in port Harcourt in 2006 and god told him tonight and we allow some of the saints of heaven to participate in your meeting what do you mean do you mean they participate yes sometimes the impartation in the service is not a product of your anointing you were ministering and the person that handed over the baton to you also came to help you. I'm showing you these things to awaken your consciousness because the battle of the age is a battle of mysteries. This is why we allow ourselves to be spent before God. There's an assignment we cannot carry out with our training. There's an assignment we cannot carry out with our, our wisdom, our understanding and our learning. There must be spiritual networking. Tell those who do business and prosper. They will tell you where they go to and the people they meet. Every level and every layer, every strata has a gatekeeper. You must fraternize. There are things you may never be able to do until your company begins to interact with you. Most of you, as you begin to pray, you start feeling sensations all over your body. What is this? What does this thing mean? Forget it. What is happening is that they are welcoming you into your realm. Stay there. Stay there. That's the time to stay. They are welcoming you. Don't be carried away because you felt heat on your hand. No. Journey until fraternity is complete. Hey. Hey. Ah, ah, ah. Oh, oh, oh. Some of you have no gift. Don't be worried. You don't need gift so much to move the kingdom. I'm telling you, there are not mysteries that are your advantage. There's a place you will enter in the spirit. You will come down with the authority that is beyond the gift. You not know, read about your patriarch Babalola how that he prayed until angel Gabriel showed up and gave him a tube of yam say eat it how do you think a man wields such authority fraternity we must travel beyond time we must travel beyond space we must travel beyond the limitations of flesh I came to show you things that make for the advantage for this age Producing spiritual networking. Pray enough, you will know what I'm telling you. The third level of prayer is what we call spiritual administration. There's a level you get to in prayer that every time God needs an intervention, He begins to summon the warriors. You will not know why. You will not know why. You wake up every night by 12. There is a gate about to open in darkness. God needs to summon his men to provide backing from earth. Because if there is no backing from earth, even the divine will be epileptic. Unless God chooses to exercise the sovereignty. And God doesn't use his sovereignty very often. I, Daniel, understood by books. The years of captivity was 70 years. But heaven was waiting. There's no man on earth. Administration cannot take place. Even the archangels were ready. But there can be no administration. Until Daniel went on his knees. That was when Gabriel came. And said after that the prince of Persia is gone. The prince of Persia will come. He showed him divine order. How civilizations are born. How the administrations of heaven are ruled among, upon the earth realm. But prayer is the precursor of divine administration. The prayers of the saints, the Bible said, are sent to heaven as others. They are stored up in golden fires. 
So when God wants to do a thing, He will fetch from the prayer of the saints and He will mix it with incense in heaven. He will mix it with spices. Spices. So that possibilities take place. I showed you Colossians 4.12 earlier. Epaphras is one of you. A born servant of Christ. Laboring fervently for you in prayers. That you may stand perfect administration. Galatians 4.17 My little children of whom I travel again in prayer. That's a teacher talking. Christ is not only formed when truth is brought. We make men stand by prayer. Administration. That guy may never be a prophet unless the intercessor pray. Can I assure you something? Even the revival we are talking about in Africa, you will be shocked that the prayer was not generated in Africa. But it's called divine administration. There are men that have burned themselves in caves, praying for 50 years. But because their prayer provoked heaven, God now decides to pour His Spirit on Africa. His administration. There are men that you will never know in time. They will be honored in heaven. He says some of them, the world is not worthy for their names to be mentioned. These men are responsible for kingdom administration. Some of you don't know. You are praying, you think it's not answered. Forget that thing. They told you prayer is all about bread and wine. That's why you think your prayers are not being answered. Most of the voices rising today is because you prayed. You may never meet in time, but in heaven, they will tell you the reason you are a pastor and you prospered in colors was because a Epaphras was praying behind the cave. The reason you raised the dead is not because you have faith for the dead. A Epaphras is praying. Strategies of heaven administering places and possibilities because men accept the fetish of priesthood. Divine intelligence. If at this time you receive the grace for prayer, give God thanks. You are the most significant in the battlefield. Oh, oh, oh. oh hey. Ah, 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 ah. A generation must rise. I was making fun of Lawrence Oyo. I told him, How can you go and do retreat for 90 days and you come and preach for two days? We were just laughing. And I said, You are a spiritual waiter. And God opened my eyes. And I saw that when he chanted, when he begins to chant, there is a smoke of glory that comes out. The first thing he does is that he enters people and energizes them. And then the residual enters the territory and creates a cloud of glory. So everywhere he releases that chant, possibilities are open. So he may have to wait for 90 days to chant for two hours. It's a technology in the spirit. Meanwhile, some carnal men come and they are trying to chant like him. They think it's melody. They don't understand that it's a system of spiritual resonance to cause the heaven to align with the earth. It's called Mahanai. It's not the melody. It's what is generated. Administration. The greatest man in the kingdom may never be seen on the pulpit. But in heaven you will see generous. And you will be surprised. You will see generous. Hey, yeah. Ah. Oh. Ah. 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 The advantages we have now. I was telling Theophilus, I said, Okay, you are not a summit, you are a priest. Me, I know you. And then we started laughing. You don't understand. You can hear a song and you come alive. What's going on? 
networking kingdom administration this is why there's no room for competition we know where we are we know our assignment I am preaching everywhere I know it's not about me hey uh, I am Some of the interventions you will receive is not because of your faith, it's because of networking. Networking. Did you not study your Bible? Paul was going to Damascus to kill the believers. The moment he entered the perimeter of Damascus, Jesus struck him down. Jesus struck him down. You cannot enter Damascus. Why? There's a priest in Damascus. His gate is kept. So that guy can provoke Jesus to strike Paul. And when Jesus finished talking to Paul, he said, rise up, go into the city. You'll be told what to do. And Ananias is the one that determines what happens here. This text is within the radar of Ananias. If Ananias speaks, I can respond from my throne. Networking, administration, so Ananias made an apostle out of Paul by spiritual administration. You can keep people in Jerusalem, but if you enter Damascus, you must first of all meet Ananias. And he showed up and said, Brother Paul, Brother Paul, I am not a preacher. My name is not known, but I keep the gates of Damascus. Brother Paul, the Jesus that appeared to be on the road while coming. He sent me to you. Now rise up. Hey, 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 hey. Administration. I've gone for meetings before. I just stood on the altar. People began to prophesy. I went back and said, Oh boy, my anointing don't increase you. God told me, No. They prayed in tongues for 60 days before you came. Administration. You reign. You reign. You reign. Sit down. Sit down. Sit down. Sit down. Help that brother. Help that brother. I don't want us to chat. Sit down. The fourth thing that prayer does is reformation. Help the brother. Help. Them. We will advance. We will ascend by prayer, not by the anointing. We ascend by prayer tonight. Everybody must be baptized in the baptism of prayer. From hosting to networking to administration, then to reformation. It's after reformation that blessings come. What is reformation? You pray to a level. Then you enter the spirit. And they begin to wear you your garment. All of us. We start as sons. But when we ascend into the spirit. Some of us we discover that we are priests. Some of us we discover that we are kings. Some of us we discover that we are warriors. Others we discover we are merchants. It's in heaven. That the mapping is done. It's in heaven that the reprogramming is done. I will show you from scriptures. Speak in tongues for one minute. So, 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 Promise. You reign, you reign, you reign, Papa. You are my queen. You reign, you reign, you reign. You
the heavenly companies are beginning to come. Bara sabala tabrisa, brina tabila, brina tabila, brina tabila. Hey, oh Oh, 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 warriors listen the psalmist said it is the Lord that teaches my hands to fight and my fingers to war it's a dimension in the spirit that was why he raised warriors the Bible spoke of Adino the earth knight at one point he took a spear and he slew 800 men by what means a man that had seen the finger of war was his instructor Eliezer, the son of Dodo, he fell on a spear and he conquered the garrison of army. Why? He was taught by a warrior. Shamar, the son of Ake. Why? He was taught by a warrior. That was the same dimension that came upon Philip. He said Philip went to Samaria. He preached Christ there. He took over the whole city. He's a warrior. These are men of skill. They can manipulate. The Bible said they move upon the mountains like gazelles. Like gazelles. They know the strategies of war. Because in the spirit, they have been formulated. That's why I say, blow the trumpet in Zion. Sound an alarm upon his holy mountains. For the day of the Lord cometh. And he comes and he said, they will be like the noise of chariots. Warriors. Warriors. He said, they will be like the noise of chariots. Can I tell you about the story of chariots? There are horses. Some of them are called Mustangs. The Mustang doesn't know how to turn back. It can move through fire. That's the dimension of people that God is raising. You tell them, do not go to Jerusalem. The man going to Jerusalem, this is what will happen to him. But he's a Mustang. He can't back down. He doesn't know how to back down. A prophet comes. So if you go to Jerusalem, you'll be in prison. You say, I go to Jerusalem, bowed in the spirit. That's a warrior. He's a mustang. He can journey through death because there's a kingdom to advance. He can walk through fire because there's a kingdom to advance. The mustang. The mustang generation. The other ones are called speed horses. The speed horse is what brings acceleration to the move of the spirit. Those are the ones that carry kings. They can enter before you see. You have show horses. The show us is the one that is gifted. He can come into a stadium in Afghanistan and 30 cripples rise and lose 2 million souls in Afghanistan. Why? He's a show horse. He can reveal the excellencies of his glory. He can show the dimensions of the kingdom. God raises an army. Warriors, priests, kings, and merchants. I can't proceed. The heavenly companies are here. I can't proceed. Bale, bale, bale. You rain, you rain, you rain. There's a radical anointing about to begin to flow. Some of you, you will literally be carried to the spiritual. Some of you will receive literal impartations upon your life that will change you. Some of you will see just men made perfect. Some of you will enter fraternities in the heavens. 
and you will manipulate things on earth. Are you ready to pray? Should the barras give it as a lahate rapat on the capizelite? I don't press capilla it all my city daro to panda talio echo popo roto pezizi lifrete naso copali I don't pass rateko sekevilia I take omite carrier catonia de teria it go a paragadi rato guse carriata alite pondoia ay 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 Zirieto Rania Akadia Topenia Ile Kupadia Adagoru Degede Yeko Yakamakaya Akwadiando Agaga Asodi Lemoria Aye 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 Roata Aparone Geberi Ay 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 Soverete Verete Verete Overete verete, overete mirate ala tua, yede de barata na gazia, aroto pono de roto veladia, uoro, 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 ye pasa zelia, rete vesizia, atena kandogora, rete vesi, opalo atande gaba, ay 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 can you ascend? Can you ascend? We are ta 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 ta. La ka ta twa dia, a tango pendia, a ka pa dia pura dia, ileke pa zate, a ta to to, e te ka twa tali, ito, 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 erata ya ya, zete po, ai ko pa. Ropa, ropa, ah! Eleveria lighter, Baron de Gavis is eleveria Natali. It wonder para, it wonder para, it wonder para. Le passa zelia, aye, aye, aye. Remember, it is consciously, consciously. Paul say, I will, I will. You don't need the sound to ascend. You don't need the sound because in the time of war, there might not be a pianist around. There might not be a drummer. Can you engage your will and tell the Lord, I am rising above the level of mediocrity. I am coming up stronger. I'm coming up higher. Yet to put a top or a trial. 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 Yes, support. Ato, eseliata, ke paradia, ai kapasese, elasata, jaya. Kwata toto, eleke de bonai, ete toto. Aya, 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 Power is here. Ye devil, the two litera, the two na bikuar, as the lish adai, as the turadi agurudai, leko panya, leko yerusha, ay 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 ay. One level, Julia, shaka pataliat, entaria. Ite, 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 
locking on his inside but when the creator showed up he traveled 
over land and sea to get to that man because he knows that when he succeed in getting that man ten cities will be taken tonight we are going to pray as many here whose potential have been tamed by an affliction have been tamed by by a stone that the devil has placed in their heart tonight freedom comes and as freedom comes the reality they represent begin to find expression ay, 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 ay. can you begin to pray and ask the lord you receive freedom from every stone that have been placed in your hand by the devil every stone that weaken the potency of your witness for jesus every stone that makes the witness of your of you of jesus in your mouth to be weaker the devil is not in control the devil is not in charge jesus is in control can you protest your freedom? Can you proclaim your liberty? Can you demand freedom? That thing no God that make her witness to be weak. That thing that makes his witness to be weak. That his righteousness cannot challenge the righteousness of others on the street. Righteous warriors rise from among us. Righteous warriors. Warriors of blessing holiness. Warriors of fire. Warriors with thunder in their mouth. They rise from among us tonight. No more mediocrity. No more lukewarmness. We come against and we overcame every spirit that has been unleashed against the youth of this country. Ali Kaponde Pariande Zali. Listen. Listen. Spiritual interaction is about to begin. As you pray now, most of you will connect to ancient covenants, ancient prophecies, ancient mantles. Interaction is about to begin. I don't want to break the flow of prayer, but I needed to announce it because that's what's going on now. And in the name of Jesus, the ceremony begins. Go ahead and pray in the Holy Ghost. You will begin to have interaction. Let sisters be carried. Let sons be carried. 
into hollow chambers, into secret quarters. Oh God, let the chariot of fire come. Take men into deep experiences. Read the Pasetopedia. Enter, enter, enter. We open the channels in your spirit. We command the floodgate open. Enter, enter. Let the gate of encounters be open. From this night, from this night, you will not be confused any longer about what the Lord will have you do. No more confusion. We throw confusion like a carpet and we roll it off your path. Come into the realm of the angelic. Welcome with the spirit of judgment made perfect. Let the Lord grant you encounter, deep encounter that will clear every form of doubt in your spirit. Yes, Lord. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Holy Spirit. In the name of Jesus. Listen. Listen if you can. Sir, one of the evidence that God will prove to you that this program, this program that just held, is, is orchestrated by Him is that he will give you a sign and the sign is this after now you will see packet of prayer cells littered all over this city all over this campus men and women boys and girls will suddenly come under an influence that they can't control you will see that they will be gathering in parks praying I, I enter possessor and as I speak the energy to perform it is coming upon people lift up your hands Rande Cassia Banata Lepidia Tabasia Iconia Kama Itetonia Tite Laitwaga Baye Holy Spirit of God Jesus Fudialas Listen. Don't pray again. Don't pray again. You have prayed. The Lord has heard us. It's time for the emissaries that are here to do their job. Be quiet and be sensitive. Precious Holy Spirit of God, lift up your hands if you can. Cominante le pizze le paradia, te teniandro hole ke pizze zo menaita, aradom me kofes lige verande, zigidai. Lord, I ask in the name of Jesus, by your spirit, stretch forth your hand like a canopy over this assembly and begin to pick in men, begin to pick in sons and daughters into the place of responsibility. Right now, precious Holy Spirit, from the front to the back, from the left to the right, Lord, let your hand begin to anoint your people. Let your hand begin to anoint everyone. Let none be left. Let none be, uh, be, be, be left out of this ceremony. Jesus, touch Holy Spirit. Caprata, lefre eta pasisu, skivelati atorodo melaita, touch Holy Ghost, tenati zase lefre eta, toto rote katatania ura, ayayayayayayayayayayayayayayayayayayayayayayayayayayayayayayayayayayayayayayayayayayayayayayayayayayayayayayayayayayayayayayayayayayayayayayayayayayayayayayayayayayayayayayayayayayayayayayayayayayay
let the garment of laziness lethargy and lukewarmness let it be burnt up by the fire of the anointing let it be burnt up by the fire of the anointing some of you suddenly you will begin to weep you will begin to cry your hand will begin to burn your feet will begin to burn your stomach will begin to construct with power yes lord let the experiences begin let it begin stronger 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 holy ghost holy ghost holy touch initiate man to it initiate initiate by your spirit by your spirit oh by your spirit by your spirit I see a young man. Your eyes were open before, but something happened somewhere. The eyes have been shut. You missed. You messed up with your consecration. The eyes have been shut. You can't see things anymore. Even when you see his glory and understanding is withheld from you. Tonight the Lord performs the work of restoration. Holy Spirit, locate that one. Let your hand come upon him stronger. Let his eyes be open. Let it be open. Let the prophetic anointing. Let it come back. Let it come back. Resile the either. Jete salio. Lapate echo. Ay, 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 Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Shkivali, the fire of an evangelist is coming upon somebody. You had passion for soul before now, but you are never confident. Tonight, the Lord can do a fire. Lord, where is that one? Where is that sister? Lighten her feet. Lighten the feet. Lighten the feet. Put cause of fire. Cause of fire. Fire. Yes, Lord. Let it begin. Light up an acclepedia. Repeat a sissy tenere. I can fadi a twale. Twale a tire. Scapua. Ay, 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 Oh my God, oh my God, a bunch of keys is being handed over to somebody and for you that person, the Lord is raising you as a deliverer, he's making you a deliverer, doors, you will open doors by just praying, just declaring you will open people you will open possibilities that have been locked by satanic power such is the authority that the lord hand over to somebody here thank you holy spirit thank you jesus let me not Four of you here that God is giving the authority for priesthood over the land. It's an ordination of God, it's not by the hand of man. Father, everyone here tonight that you are bringing into that hallowed position of priesthood, 
the wisdom, the technocracy, the stamina. From the left of this hall to the right, from the front to the back, Holy Spirit, touch them now. Our nations, our nations, our nations, our nations, our nations, priests, territorial priests. That back row where people are standing. God is bringing authority upon some of you. You will become rulers among men. Rulers. The anointing for rulership. I told you they are warriors. Help him. They are priests. They are kings. And they are merchants. Anointing for rulership. Father in the name of Jesus. Release it upon them. Release it upon them. Now Holy Ghost. Now Holy Ghost. Now Holy Ghost. Now, Holy Ghost. Barata Barati the boss. So, Brettetetetetes. Rulers. If you are close to anybody that somebody they are not to help them so they are not injured. And the Lord is releasing wisdom. Wisdom for world creation. For influence from the left to the right, from the front to the back, Holy Spirit, touch them. Take it, take it, take oh, no, it. Wisdom. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. The angels of God are walking amidst us. Don't be distracted. Don't be a spectator. Focus. Focus on the Lord. Help that brother standing on the table so he doesn't enjoy himself. I'm being careful to hold myself back so people are not injured in the process. But don't be distracted. When God succeeds in raising warriors, raising priests, raising kings and raising merchants, then he activates the blessing. The blessing is by wealth transfer. And there are six precursors. God will give you a wisdom that cannot be gainsaid. It can come in form of a message, it can come in form of an invention, but it will trigger wealth transfer. God will give you a name. Your name will begin to open doors and it will trigger wealth transfer. God will give you a grace that will bring you before kings and the nobles. It will trigger wealth transfer. God will give you men, men in high places. It will trigger wealth transfer. And God will give you an influence. A scepter called an influence of the spirit. It will trigger wealth transfer. That's what we bring the blessing. Lift your hands and receive. Receive, receive, receive. Receive. Receive, receive. Receive, 
Receive the grace that opens doors. Receive the grace that brings men before kings. Receive the gifts of men. Man, we are to you until your host we become like the host of God. Receive influence. Influence, influence, influence in the spirit. This is the wisdom for which invention. I am a rebel. I am a Come on, come on. Let's do a territorial business. Please come on. Man of God, come on, come on, please. Rasim, please, Judah. We want to make decrees, territorial decrees. There needs to be a shift in this land. Gates need to open. Portals over the land needs to open. Heritages that were lost before now needs to be restored. As we begin to make these decrees, some of you who are implicated, the hand of God will come upon you in a strange way. In a strange way. That's the last thing God wants to do tonight. Reverend, please. Now, it's not a time to be emotional, so calm down, calm down, calm down, calm down. Calm down. You can stop praying. As God's servant began to minister, the Lord began to show me gates in the spirit. And there are gates in diverse dimensions. He began to show me how gatekeepers have gone missing and all kinds of trafficking have happened through our gates. I saw the gates of sound. I saw the gates of fashion. I saw the gates of the prophetic. I saw the gates of doctrine. How that those who were designed to keep the gates have gone away. And the Lord is saying to me that there is an urgent work that he needs to do and we don't have time for people to mature. So what he will do is to grant us gatekeepers who will ensure that nothing new comes in that is called strange. And I saw the number 50. Jesus you can stop praying. You can stop praying. Because you showed me 50. That our borders in the spirit will be secured until a generation comes into maturity. Let your hand help me find the 50. Across different sectors of our civilization as a territory. 
As I begin to count, let your hand begin to find it. From my right to my left, from the front to the back, help me find the 50 that you are anointing tonight into gatekeeping expressions. Thank you, Father. Now, Holy Spirit, help me find them now. One. Holy Ghost, two. Three. Four. Five. Holy Ghost, six. Yes, seven. Eight. Nine. Ten. Eleven. Twelve. Thirteen. Fourteen. Fifteen. Sixteen. Yes, seventeen. Eighteen. Nineteen. 20 all over the building by an anointing by an anointing a tangible touch 21 and 2 and 3 and 4 yes they may have walked as weaklings but they go forth with an anointing the borders are secured Yes, a tangible anointing. I also see in the spirit, in the similitude of swords, I perceive that it's an administration to bring men into warrior existence. I see seven swords in the spirit. And I ask Lord that you will cause these swords to descend. Let them descend. Let them descend. Let them descend. Let them descend. That the territory is reshaped by the ministry of this warrior company. Help me find them now. Help me find them now. The seven of them. The seven of them. I see clearly there are four young ladies and three young men. In Jesus name I pray. Now the hand of the Lord will find that seven because the anointing will destroy very strongly. Those four young ladies and those three young men. Holy Ghost, anoint them now. Anoint them now. Anoint them now. Anoint them now. Let that anointing become strong upon them. Let it become strong upon them. Now, ushers, we need the seven here. We need the seven here. There is seed to those who are coming. We need the seven here. The hand of the Lord is coming upon them strongly. Ah, me kaito vezapani atone atelamos. Mi atelazos. Mi atelazos. Mande ke bala costa haga. De ke menosta kamina de. La di gombra desta kadaba. E nosa vande kradosa. E vanguard company. E vanguard company. Seven. E vanguard company. E nosa ki baratema. Male costo bradeka. Semenuga bradeke le marata. For in the day that the apostles needed men. They asked, set from among you seven men. For these seven will become expressions of different configurations that have been wrought by the teachings and the doctrines of the apostles. Seven men, seven, 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 seven. Kemalagada Bayada, bring that lady to Mandobros to Kolobonadega, Agabratos de Kevele Kopane. Lebada, Lebada, Acosto Brodo Code, Agalabatos Takamenata, Elecomenate, Stadido, Ragedo, Saga Balate, Ragosto Bregede. There are three young men still left. There are three young men that, that should be here. There are three young men. Three young men. Bring the men out. Manato Saka, Abrate Cobaleto Se, Sibanado, Sibanado. Aracobe le costo colebrata, a de costo brodo, e roconta, e donde fradesto haga, e malada capayato, sabate capanda sa, seven, 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 seven configurations of the spirit, of the spirit, mandos, 
Soko balateka. Alando men do brate kosto prekete. Semeli gadabaya. The permutations of the spirit in the seven. The permutations as a vanguard, as a vanguard. Mando soka balata. Alamanando rabando seketelia. Realize that the seven are just points of contact. So what the Lord is doing with them is spreading all over the house. Mane kobali na mashaka belete. Erogono molo de vede gede balata. Anebro sokobala de gede bregedele de gedosa. Emba bro sokom brede gede gede letos. Rugabala do sundali aste. Emena gabayata. Jabadoya. Ele pombo rodo porodo. Raketolim brastele gede boloto. Emanata, e pratonos, e buene mexica, lemenet, lemenet, e londo sondo, prane costo, samalaba da costo, lianda. In the name of Jesus, we are going to do something briefly. Can you lift up your hands? You are going to be shouting glory seven times. And at the count or at the seventh count, everything that is not of God, that is hiding inside of anyone here, that makes it difficult for you to advance spiritually, it will check out of you naturally by the power of the Holy Ghost in the name of Jesus. Are you ready? I will count one, you will shout glory. One, two, three, four, five, six. Spirit, I charge you in the name of the Lord Jesus. Come out, come out, come out, come out, come out, come out. Blinded demons, immorality, spirit of seduction. I hear my voice. I charge you in the name of Jesus. Out of them, out of them. Out of them, repide ke vesele, reto vasli eto, kaye laita, laite laita, dimogle here. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. I cause a separation. Anyone here under the yoke of manipulation, under the influence of spirit husband, spirit wife, you that is molested in the night, I declare as the mouthpiece of God, tonight you see them no more. In the name of Jesus, I am a rando pasiza, rateka vila tena kazazai, I kavalia kufrote, laga didi yato, raile yada, yekeke kakaka, akakakaka, Quiet, quiet. That demon that comes to molest you, to steal your spiritual energy, Upos, I charge you in the name of the Lord Jesus. Let your anchor be broken. Let your anchor be broken. Let your hold be broken. In the name of Jesus. I break the yoke of demon that makes you slave to masturbation, to pornography right now by the anointing. The help of the Lord comes your way. That trace is erased. Your brain is format. You receive energy to say no. Laga veselem erata vanas shkava laita labro. Oh, 
Wamba paraya ya. Shale. Shale. Listen, listen, listen. If that lady place your hand in your womb here. Watch me. Place your hand like this. Come bahala. I see the Lord doing a mighty work of deliverance tonight. For us. Some of us, it's not fire that we like. We can't sustain the fire. When it comes, after two weeks, it is leaked out. Because of strange habits. But tonight, deliverance has come. Place your hand on your womb if you are a lady. Fair brother, place your hand on your forehead. For Nestle, he is a Zapanaskle feeder. Kolomene Gavala Talia, Talia Tamanaita. Take a very dish. Ratadash, Ratadash, Ratadash. Holy Ghost. Whatsoever that is not of you, that is hiding inside anyone here. Lord, I release fire. I release fire. I release fire from the crown of the head to the source of the feet. I release fire, 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 fire. Let it burn up every chap that is hiding inside your daughters, inside your soul. That enemy of the prophetic, that enemy that have got them from expressing the anointing right now. I break their yoke. Ah, I proclaim freedom. I proclaim liberty. I proclaim liberty in the name of Jesus. Thank you. Hallelujah. If you can be quiet, be quiet. Let me say a few things here, please. If you can be quiet, be quiet. Now, what I'm going to say applies just to a few people. But the impression in my heart is that the phrase matching others suggests um, a Joshua generation. So Moses had labored to a point, and then the work was not completed because the children of Israel were not in Canaan yet. They had to still go forward, they had to march forward. But Joshua felt at a point that the shoes or the boots of Moses were too big to fill in. And that is the feeling that is dominant in some people tonight. You have heard so many strange things and you think, well, can I really walk in these shoes? Perhaps you were hoping that God will shrink those boots and that God will lower the standards. But God said, no, I will expand your feet instead. I will expand it. Now, I've said this just to prepare you so you know when the impartation happens. Deuteronomy 34.9, the Bible says that Joshua was filled with the spirit of wisdom because Moses the son of God laid his hands on him. So it was by an impartation that his feet expanded, as it were, and he could march towards Canaan. Some of you have been told you are in the lineage of Babalola and you are wondering me, I don't think I have the size of the feet to fit into that boot. But tonight, your feet will be expanded. So there will be a tangible sign that it is you. There will be a tangible sign. And it will be on your feet. You would, at an instant, feel like you are heavy on that feet. You are heavy. And it's because the boot does not size into your legs as at yet. And so you cannot lift and march. But by the hand of God, by the hand of God, there will be an expansion. Raise your hands, everybody. Raise your hands. It's going to happen to your feet. Let it happen, Holy Ghost. Let it happen. Let it happen. Let it happen. Let it happen. An expansion. An expansion. An expansion. Your feet. Your feet are expanded to fit in. To fit in. To fit in this boot. So that you match. So that you can match. And you can lead an army. You can lead an army. into okay now. It makes our feet like in feet. It makes our feet like in feet. So that we walk upon our high places. So that we walk upon our high places. Let it happen. Let it happen. Holy Ghost, let it happen. Shakato your manana soko. As the sound is released, the spirit is released, and there's expansion. 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 On your feet. On your feet. On your feet. On your feet. Yes. 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 From heaviness to lightness. From heaviness to lightness. From heaviness to lightness. From heaviness to lightness. On your feet. On your feet, on your feet, on your feet. Now you can march, you can march, you can march, you can march. Rapa Kataya Dopa Ladaba. 
Rekata, we walk in the footsteps of the fathers. We walk in the footsteps of the fathers. We walk in the footsteps of the fathers. Reba baba bala mana na nasa. Eka kada roba lusa kete komba. Rekata ya bada dada. Expansion, expansion, expansion. Shata ya ba. Giant feet, giant feet, giant feet, giant feet, giant feet. Shaka ta koma na 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 na. Riba to yo bala kata ya bala bada bas. Rekata kada dosa. If it's happening to you, you will know. You will know. You will know. It is not for everybody, just a few. But you know, your feet are expanding. It's becoming lighter, 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 lighter. You travel faster. You run through troops. You leap over walls. By the impartation of the Holy Ghost. Rakata ya balada balada das. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Confirm your word with signs and wonders. Following, 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 following. Shata ya balada balada das. We are rounding up for tonight. Every worker that labored for this meeting, run out quickly, quickly. I'm praying for them, but the grace will reach you at the back, because God is raising laborers. Paul said, "The things that you have received from me before many witnesses, the same commit to faithful men." Who shall be able to teach others? Workers are entitled to divine committers. That's what's about to happen now. I'm, I'm about to commit to you the graces, the anointings, the inheritances we receive from the fathers, because you are faithful stewards. Now begin to make demands. On what you want, the heavens over you are open. Make demands. Hallelujah. Father, upon this once, let there be a transference of grace. Take of the spirit that you have put upon us and place it upon them. Captains of fifty, captains of hundred, captains of thousands. Right now, in the name of Jesus, I ask: Let there be a release of virtue. Take. Just be quiet. It's coming upon you like the dew of heaven. Now, Holy Spirit. 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 Those of you in the congregation, lift your hands. Everything that we have in God, by the Spirit of God, let it be made available. From the left to the right, from the front to the back, enter into divine economies beyond your level of understanding. In the name of Jesus. The dew of heaven comes upon you like the dew of heaven. It comes upon you like the dew of heaven. Breathe upon them. Breathe upon them. Measures of the spirit, like rivers of living waters.
you receive utterance in the spirit utterance the spirit of wisdom comes upon you the hand of God comes upon you I want to pray for the sick now you are sick in your body just place your hand on your chest You will be healthy to fight the battle. Every spirit of infirmity holding anybody here bound. Right now I charge you in the name of Jesus out of their bodies. I speak to your bodies. Hear the word of the Lord from the crown of your head to the soles of your feet. Be healed in the name of Jesus. I release life over you. I speak to your eyes, your ears, your blood, your organs. I command every infirmity. Break in the name of Jesus. Ears open. I see. Thanks go in the name of Jesus. Everybody with a blood infection, right now be cleansed. Be cleansed. In the name of Jesus. I command pains, broken bones, joints, afflictions, arthritis, be healed in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. Go ahead and check your bodies. Check, check. Do the things you could not do before. Come on, check, check, check. Listen, check your bodies. If you have noticed a change, wave at me. Check. I'm seeing hands. You have noticed a change. Let make it higher. Make it higher. We can't take testimonies, but many of you are already healed. Now you see the hands. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. In the name of Jesus, the hand of God is upon you. The face of God shine upon you. The name of God is named upon you. The Lord is gracious unto you. His countenance is lifted over you. In the name of Jesus, no force of this land will swallow you up. Every depth and dimension of God has come upon you tonight. You will manifest it in your lifetime. In the name of Jesus. And the things that we project from you will remain as eternal dynasties. In the name of Jesus. The gates of the city is open to you. The land responds to you. In the name of Jesus. Move from glory to glory. Even as by the Spirit of God. Thank you, Father. Some have been touched by the Lord tonight. We'll have a register at this door as we shut down for the night. Tomorrow you will be given the opportunity to share. I know that as we go home, a lot more will begin to... 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 A lot more will begin to 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 I hope you enjoyed this video and I believe that you were blessed if um, you were blessed by this video, make sure that you click on the share button and share it to a friend. And also make sure that you like the video so that YouTube can recommend this video to other people so that they can also be blessed by the message. 
if you have any question please make sure that you contact us and we'll get back to you and also if you are watching this video and you don't know jesus christ ask the lord and personal savior i want you to make that decision just contact us in the description call us and let us lead you to receive jesus christ as your lord and personal savior and lastly make sure that you subscribe to the channel and turn on the, that notification bell icon turn it on so that when new videos are uploaded you can be notified thank you so much and see you in our next video and prayer section bye